Being 7 o'clock, September 5th, 2017, I call this planning board meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Gillette is out till the end of the month. Dennis Magenda? I'm here. Roy Barron? Yep. And Connie Dillon? Here. I'll raise Rick St. Jean to voting status. Place of Bob Gillette. Everybody read the minutes. Make a motion to accept. Second. Any second in? Any discussion on the minutes? Any corrections? All those in favor? Motion carries. Budget, we have no report this week. I move that the Two conditions for OSPE self-service, uh, self-storage, have been met. One being the uh, DES approval and letter from the fire chief, which we received both. Second. Being seconded. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Motion carries. Mr. Knight, do you wish to address this board? I do. Uh, this is my, my first OSCE planning board meeting, so bear with me. Um, where would you like me to stand? And I also Anything have a, you want, sir. All right. I do have a couple images and renderings. I don't know if there's a good spot for me to put uh, these yeah, or yeah. just hang on to them. And I the past month. All right. Well, I, as it says on the agenda, um, I have interest in, uh, in developing a commercial ground-mounted um, solar farm, and there's a, there's a couple pieces of property that I've identified on Route 16 that I'm looking at, and before I sort of take the next step, I was hoping to have a brief informal conversation and get some feedback, given that solar really isn't addressed in, in the zoning ordinance. It's uh, something relatively new to New Hampshire in, in some ways, so I was hoping to get a better understanding of how the town of Ossipee might look at, at a proposal like this. And I, I do have a project in Farmington that I figure might give you a better idea of, of what I'm looking to do. Um, I recently a couple months ago, purchased 35 acres in Farmington and am looking at using about 9 to 10 acres for the solar farm. And you can see these blue horizontal lines here indicate where the panels would sit. So it's a, it's a relatively large, large system. And to give you a little context, this size system here um, could power almost 400 homes. So it's, it's a pretty significant system. Um, and, and that's that's what I'm doing in, in Farmington, just to give you a sense. And there, there are a couple pieces of, of property, as I mentioned, on Route 16. One's at 1221 um, that I'm looking at. And then another at 1250. They're both um, in the commercial roadside district. So I, I was just hoping to, I guess, get a little... Sorry, go ahead. Where is that? Um, I think it's 
Yeah, you, know, you can see it at the bottom of the aerial here. A couple of them. Survey. Yeah, the big fields got the North Country track. Oh, oh, oh yeah, so tired. Thank you. There's an older, Brooks. older barn on currently on the site. How many acres is that? This is about 12 here. And the other site is where? I'm sorry, the other site specifically. It's um, it's a little further south. It's 1221. The address is further south. On the, on the right hand side of the road. This particular one at twelve twenty one is a is a more wooded parcel, uh, but it's further south mm -hmm. than the across the street from the boat storage buildings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, I think it's not tired. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, sorry? If you walk that area, you know it, you know it. Yep, there's, there are some wetlands on the site. It's not a marsh and water's no problem. There are some wetlands on the site, but the, the 1221 address is actually 29 acres. So there's quite a bit more property there. Some of it is affected by wetlands, um, but there's there's plenty of room on the site to, to do what I'm looking to do. Um, so, so I guess uh, the, the fact that solar isn't specifically addressed in, in the ordinance isn't necessarily a surprise given it's, it's relatively new in some sense. And just to, to give you some more context as to what I'm looking to do and what, what I'm doing in Farmington, um, all of the requirements for the, the roadside commercial district can be met. The 200, uh, 200 feet of frontage, the minimum lot requirements of one acre, the setbacks, um, when, if there's, there's uh, support from the board, I would certainly put together a more formal um, proposal. And in that proposal, all of those requirements um, would, would be met within this development. I think just my sort of question is, as it isn't addressed in the ordinance, would a variance be required or a, a special exception? And, and just generally what the concerns of the planning board might be, what questions might you have as, as I look to take the next step and, and develop a more formal proposal to put in front of the, the board. Your thoughts, Steve? I have to look into it a little bit, a little better. I spoke with you on the phone. Yep. Yeah. Just a couple. couple and it was weeks. a special exception. Was that? <clears throat> well, I guess that that's my question to you. Um, in in Farmington, it was considered a special exception, but I think it's kind of a gray area in that it's um, in reading the ordinances. I understand that for a special exception to be granted, it has to be listed as a as permitted to be. A special exception and, and it's not and addressed we really anywhere. Don't have, no, we don't have any. Um, but it's it's kind of a Great. unique instance. Um, so certainly town to town is different, but in, in my conversations and dealings with the town of Farmington, they're looking at it as a, a special exception. Right. Yes. Uh, and a master plan, even though it's going to have to be updated. Uh, one of the things in there was encouraging this sort of thing for the town. So uh, I kind of following what the master plan was considering, uh, I can't really see where there'd be any real problem here. Yes, right. Um, the only reason I could see you might need a special exception would be when you look at the square footage of the, like what he's doing in Farmington. I mean, I don't think our definition necessarily covers it, but I mean, you'd be looking at a structure that is you know, 300 feet wide and 1,000 feet long. I don't think it would be considered a structure. You know, if it's more than wow. four feet tall and it's, and, it's, in and it's in the ground, I think you might, I'm not, I believe me when I say I'm not against this at all, yeah, but I, that may be the reason that it triggered, what I'm saying is that may be the reason it triggered a variance is because of even though it's not a building. It is still a. It still is a pretty large, um, which may be the reason why it triggered the, the variance issue in Farmington. Well, 
I def definitely would have to have a building permit because putting something in the ground. Well, that's what I'm saying. And if you looked at if you looked at what you did in Farmington, if that were a building footprint, that is what hell age was building. I mean, and I'm not saying that that necessarily should be the standard, but if it's not specifically addressed on road, and that may that may be why they needed a variance down there, even though I presume that it wasn't spelled out in the Farmington ordinance as well. No, it wasn't addressed so, there. Um, it, it was a, in a commercial district yep. in Farmington as well. Um, but I, I think there is a little bit of a distinction between a variance and a special exception in that a variance requires a little bit more <coughs> in the form of um, hardships. Um, yes. But a few months ago, we did speak about this sort of uh, lot coverage, previous and previous. We've had this discussion. Yep. yep. Uh, especially I mean, it's something that when we rewrite the zoning this year, is one of the things that will probably come under the wind. If, if, if we look back into that, I, I believe we talk commercial. We're going to have to take case by case. Can I uh, ask a question, Mr. Go ahead. Uh, between your panels and stuff, is the ground that we still can saturate the water down or is it going to run off? Yeah, it'll be. They'll, they'll allow enough space for saturation. In Farmington, Did you have to have fire chief permission? I'm sorry. Did you have to have the fire chief's recommendation on that? We haven't got to that point yet. Um, I've, I've been working closely with the town of Farmington, and we're going to go in front of the planning board for a formal approval soon. We've been to um, a couple planning board meeting sort of in a similar setting uh, informally um, sort of showing what what we're trying to do and have gotten informal feedback <coughs> but there's been no specific feedback from the fire department yet how did well, you deal with the uh, pizza bar? I know it wasn't as big but it's small building plan I love the plan um, well what I'm looking at is that um, you're going to produce electricity if there is a fire because of ground cover, et cetera. The chief has got to get in there. Right, and, and, so, and certainly um, part of our, our site plan, once it's developed, would allow access with the fire department in mind, and that's something that I'm happy to review with, with the, the chief here. Um, but it's, it's, it's a pretty passive use of land after the initial construction. There's not a lot of access that's required to the site. It's just general maintenance, um, lawn mowing, and that's, that uh, sort of thing. But certainly in, in the event of an emergency, there is quite a bit of power out there. So yeah. access would be designed to accommodate fire trucks. Will there be an accessory building? Not a building. Um, there would be some additional electrical equipment, transformers and such, but not a, a building structure. The only other thing I'd add, between your two sites, um, my preference would be the one... Uh, West side of 16? Yes, only because, I mean, let's face it, aesthetically, mm -hmm. um, you know, solar farm isn't a, you know, welcome to New Hampshire, look at the pretty solar panels. Um, you know, so the the one on the left, uh, on the right rather going south, mm -hmm. um, would provide the opportunity to do it off the road and quite frankly out of the visibility of Route 16. Right. Um, right. Compared to the other one, which is open right to Route 16. Sure. And then, um, yeah. You know, I'm just thinking, you know, aesthetically it would right. yeah, be a little a, nicer off the road yeah. than it would be right on Route 16 where the other field is. Yeah. And I can understand why the other field might be the more desirable of the two given the condition of the yeah. other one. But right. Yeah, that's a fair comment. And that's, um, that, that, you know, for what it's worth, it sure. actually give more growth, too. Thank you. Right. Give room for growth. But you could also lead them a pop up on 16. That's what I'm saying. Right. And it wouldn't be, you know. Yeah, it wouldn't be. And another thought that I've had is to um, subdivide either parcel in a way that may allow for roadside commercial. So 
in, in this use, you really don't need frontage other than a small access. And certainly that road frontage on 16 could probably be used in a better way. So I think there's, as we develop our proposal, there's also potential to leave a couple acres of road frontage directly on 16 and then use sort of the back area for this solar use. Um, that might be the best, best use of land. That is actually, uh, I guess my only question, one of the only questions I have is, uh, you said there were no buildings. <coughs> there probably wouldn't be any buildings other than transforming that sort of thing. Uh, being such a large installation, <coughs> do you, is that going to be a manned installation or is it just self uh, Contain. No, the there wouldn't be anyone on site. No. Um, there would be fencing for safety and security um, that would be around the entire perimeter, but there wouldn't be someone on site at all times. They're well self contained. Just a very quick question. Mm -hmm. Some of you may have asked this. Sorry, it was late. Um, how many panels and how much output are we talking about? Well, I think it's still a little bit TBD. Um, the, the system that I'm doing in Farmington, we're looking at 1.7 megawatts. Um, so that could be close to 2 million kilowatt hours annually. Um, and again, I, we've got to take a closer look. There, there's two parcels that I'm looking at. One's 12 acres and one is 29 acres. The 29 acres has some wetlands on it, so it's not all usable. Um, but I think our hope would be to be above one megawatt, which is a pretty good sized system. Yes. And you'll have to excuse me, how many panels do you think that would be? How, um, how much lock coverage in panels? Sure. Uh, in terms of acres? Well, I, I, I think it somewhat depends on the terrain. Um, the, the 12 acres is pretty flat and um, very dry from what I can tell, so I think we'd be looking at close to 10 of the 12 acres. Okay. The 29 acres, there are some wetlands on there, so that would somewhat limit our use, um, <coughs> but I think there's some still. So you'd stagger them around the, the property if you had to, to achieve your over one megawatt right. production. Okay. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> one in the audience, one comment. Where would you be selling the power? You so, said like 400 homes. Yeah, I, ideally you, you find a, a larger consumer of energy, um, a, ideally a commercial user that has a, a greater use. Um, you find someone that could take half of the mm -hmm. uh, output and then use the other half for residential. Um, but that that's certainly a parallel track as you're developing the system for output. Um, the utility requires that for all of the output you put on the grid, you have identified consumers that are going to make use of that uh, output. And it's, it's a little bit virtual in nature. It's not as if you're feeding the electricity directly into someone's home. Right. Um, but they do have to be located in this service territory. Um, so it could be anyone within the local <coughs> service territory. Well, we want to go south for that power. <coughs> Down on. Family dollar and tractor supply. O'Reilly is thinking going in there. Right. Then you've got Hannibal and Ocean State. I imagine you get rid of quite a bit of power now. Yes, sir. Uh, just a quick comment, maybe the, I hate to do your sales for you, but uh, maybe the municipality would be interested in its power and marketing itself as a green, a green town. In talking about <coughs> uh, the master plan and things like that, that makes a town very marketable uh, and differentiates, differentiates itself from a lot of towns in the state. Yeah, it's a good point. We, I, I have partnered with a company called New England Solar Garden, and they've done quite a few projects um, in partnership with municipalities. So if, if that's something that Ossipi is interested in, it could certainly be 
a part of sort of a comprehensive uh, project? Well, I know main transformers are down on Balsam Road, which is right over there, mm -hmm. and that feeds south and east. So you're not too far from that junction. Yep. Yeah, the, the, the requirements in terms of proximity to the lines are within 500 feet of three-phase power, which both of the sites are. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. in that case, it's it, they're both yeah, pretty good sites. Is, with Brooks's piece, the 12 acres, you'd have to go across the street. Right. Yeah. Which, um, probably you'd have to go into 16. Okay. I don't know, that's up to DOT. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add, sir? What, so, what is his next step then when it comes to possibly? What does he have to do? Do you want to call the board? Do you want to go from there? Well, usually. I mean, I'd just like to see him have some direction before he leaves as to what his next step is. Usually, when the, someone comes in like this, that will pass him off to Steve because they. You've got to meet the certain requirements for Steve. You would need a site plan because you are commercial. Right. So, unless you present a formal, you know, we're talking apples and oranges right now because you don't know exactly what you're going to do. Right. Well, and, hey, if you want to come back in with. All right, I'm taking the piece on the uh, next to uh, the tire, um, and I want to do this. You came in for another formal discussion with us. We could guide you more, but right now, oh, it's all up in the air. But who who determines whether or not? I mean, the question <laughs> is: Is a solar panels uh, is a commercial solar operation a permitted use in the commercial district? That is up to Steve to either deny or issue a building permit. Once he does that, if he denies it, then he has to give an excuse and the man can go to the ZBA and overturn it. Do you know without looking whether or not it's a permitted use? But you need some time we to look have into no, it. I've got time to look into it. There's some questions I'd like to ask him. Okay. Uh, but I'm looking at special exception. Okay. I mean, uh, we have nothing in the in the zoning projects. Nothing other than wind. Uh, so in our the master plan. And the master plan. And I do believe the fire department will have a lot to say. Right. Any sort of shutdowns, any storage on site? No. No storage on site. Uh, so we just the rapid shutdowns and accessibility. Maybe we'll lock water. Anyone else have questions for Mr. Suggestions for me. I should just quick one. Uh, so you said no storage on site. So all the all the uh, power you'll be generating will be direct, directly fed into the grid as your real time as you as you're producing it. Correct. Okay. So production will be zero and at night and obviously cloudy days. Correct. Okay. okay so uh, all right. Um, and you've worked with Eversource before, so I would imagine those are the lines running out in front of that area. So. Yep. Um, Okay, in Farmington they didn't have any issues, right? You just fed it back into the grid and it was fine? Well, we're not at the point where we're currently feeding back, but we're in development. And okay. there's a, a pretty long process to, to go through with Eversource, okay. um, but it's, it's they something that they... It, right, they do, they do have to take it as long as you meet certain criteria in terms of proximity and such. How long does it usually take to get through the process with? Mm, in six to nine months. Okay. Yeah. Well, one thing, I think we would... When we get to the site, final site plan review would be something from Eversource that they will take the power. I think they have to, right? They have to. Yeah, they, they have, have to. to but but state law, federal law, and federal law. I know it's under the federal law, which we would, we would need proof of it. That's all for our files. <coughs> I mean, okay. Yeah, I'll have to give that a little bit of thought, but I'm sure we could figure something out. I'm just looking at Joe Small coming in on the street saying, well, what did this guy do? Well, federal he did law. This. He's yeah. not federal law, but he 
just cover. Yeah, I mean, even if I were to put power with solar panels in my house, I could feed back into the grid, and I don't have to come here and get permission from you to do it. So. Well, right now you don't, but. Uh, <coughs> well, are we getting some kind of guidance on how we, whether we support the concept? Uh, oh, well, we I, I think I that's believe, what he's looking for. Yeah. Right? I believe that we we support the, yeah. the concept of it. Yeah. I mean. Uh, that's why I asked for a poll board. A, a poll right. board. Oh, poll board then. All those in favor of the concept. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I, I, I appreciate your time. Um, you know, I, I know this is very conceptual at this point, but it was helpful to get the feedback. Um, and I'll certainly work with Steve, and we'll, we'll start to put together a more formal plan. And I think before we submit a formal application, maybe come back in an, another informal setting with a, a more complete set of plans. <coughs> we can discuss it any time you so desire. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Case number 17-6. Thank you. STR. Continued from August 1st meeting of Tavern Events. As Ms. Michael of KJN1 LLC, 3 Common Bridge Road, map. A522 is seeking the site and review to hold outdoor events ranging from musical events, art shows, outside, yeah, outdoor stage movies, as well as provide non profits and other venue operations. You should have it here. I'd like to make a motion before we discuss it. Three, three weeks, four weeks ago now, we had a discussion and we considered whether or not uh, this idea was a, a, an amusement facility. And having, having read the ordinance, uh, the determination that night without a vote was decided that it was an amusement facility. I disagree with that. I don't think it is. I think it's just an extension of what they already offer inside the restaurant. It's just an extension of the restaurant. And if you look up in the ordinance, amusement machines, which goes to the facility, it's coin operated, or keep on the front spot, things like that. Dictates that out. <coughs> so I honestly don't believe that that should fall under it. And if, and if it is approved tonight, they shouldn't, but continues to go on. It shouldn't have any restrictions on what they do as long as they meet. Are you questioning? Amusement facility or the other ordinance? I'm suggesting that the way that ordinance is written, well, you, have you to go out and make a determination as to whether it is or isn't. It doesn't spell out its interpretation by you, by me, by everybody on this board. It's not specific. Are you saying amusement facility or amusement device? I do, my belief is it's not either one. It's a restaurant. And what they're trying to do is just offer outside what they do inside. An extension of what they already But do. in a different building, in a different zone. Well, that's true. But in the village district, you're allowed business. You're allowed business. But that's where it comes down to the definition of what is an amusement facility. Because you're allowed business, but you're not allowed an amusement facility in the village district. And that's why I'm saying it's not an amusement facility. It doesn't fit. In my estimation, it doesn't fit. Fun Spot, Whale's Tail, uh, Six Flags, those, those are amusement facilities. You don't spend money to, to operate. Rods and stuff like that. Yes. But in our in our zoning ordinance, it specifically mentions showmen and that type of thing, and where the it gets into this whole thing about whether or not the attendees are active participants or not. That's when it comes down. And this is it, it gets where I think it splits hairs, and I agree with you that it's nothing crystal clear about it. <coughs> but the question is: Is a concert, and is that something where the people are simply observing, or are they participants? They're and participants. I think the academic. Well, I, I would disagree. I think that they're observing. You don't go to a concert and participate. 
Um, I disagree with that. Okay. If you've never been to one, everybody's out there dancing and singing right along with the band. To me, that's participation. I'm sorry, but mm -hmm. we can argue that point. Oh, too? They're not specific. <coughs> so I think we need to get well, that cleared up before we go any further. Well, I do, but I also think you need to be careful not to overlook the spirit of zoning work. Um, the fact of the matter is, if you aren't very careful, then you could end up with a strip club in the middle of the village district, so long as they put a badminton net out front. <laughs> I think you need to be careful I, uh, on, on how you inter interpret what is active participation and what isn't. They're applying next month. Hmm? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 get that line, buddy. <laughs> I just think you need see you those, there. that 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 is the rub. How do you define? Listen, I've said many times. I do not fault Ash and those folks are trying to do exactly what they're doing. I get it. I understand it. The question, be, and if this was if Three Covered Bridge Road was commercial, we wouldn't even be having this discussion. The issue becomes: Hobbs is commercial. Three Covered Bridge is village. They can't merge the two lots, because if they merge the lots under our zoning ordinance, then Hobbs becomes village, not the other way. So where do you define where do you define what is the village and what isn't? Am I wrong on the merging? Uh, well, two, two things. So no, you're not, because it's about uh, roadside frontage. Mm -hmm. It becomes the lot of the lar longer roadside frontage. Okay. Right? I thought it became, so it could I become thought a village. It, became... it could become a village district. You're absolutely right. But in a village district, I can still have a restaurant. So no different <coughs> would it be. Okay. Can, we, can, we get, can we procedurally get this before we go into discussion on this? Can we get this application uh, well, is make Except, what, what is the motion that we have on the floor? You have a motion on the floor that has not been seconded. You want a second My motion was that two weeks ago when we were discussing this, we made we interpreted the fact that it was an amusement facility. That's what we want. But if you read the ordinance and you break it down, and then you read the part about the amusement machine, they're talking about something that's a facility for going out and paying money to go rides. Stuff like that. That's my interpretation. It might be different from yours. That's why I'm saying this this rule, this ordinance is so loose, we have to make an interpretation. Well, you do have to do it. And it's, it's going to directly affect you. What? Well, I have a second part. I second it. I was explaining what it was. I have seconded it. All right. Now you can carry on your discussion, <laughs> Mr. Morgan. <laughs> you do have to interpret it, and that's, that, that is the rub. That's what we struggled with last year on when they when it was brought to us under a temporary event ordinance. Um, I, if the zoning ordinance had passed this past spring, which he had proposed, we would not be having this discussion because it would have changed and it would have been a permissible use. I would quite frankly argue the guy playing a video game is participating more. <coughs> you know, if, when you get down to that definition of what is an active participant, he's participating more than the concert goer that you think is participating. That's where it comes down to the rub. I, again, I do not fault them for trying to do what they're doing. They are trying to expand their business, and that's a good thing. The problem is they're expanding it into what is a village district in an area where the neighbors don't want it. I think you have to be careful, and you have to look at every other parcel in town where you have commercial, which abuts village. Because you, if you do allow, quite frankly, them to do whatever it is they want up there, then you you need to be consistent with every other time you come up against that zoning boundary. The issue of showman versus, you know, a lot of what they've applied for in here, I think is absolutely permitted. I'm not saying you can't do badminton, you can't do bocce ball and all of the rest. I think all of those are allowable things. If that's all they're trying to do, I think you can, you can grant that. I think the minute you get into concerts and other things, then I think you are expanding the commercial use into the village district. And I, and I quite frankly, don't think that that is one of the permitted uses under the village district. You want to say something? I just think we should take both get it out of the way and then we can go on. Because right now, 
that will determine on what he can do there. Oh, I agree. We get that out of the way. Then we can uh, can I ask, ask a question? I was just curious, this is the first time I've seen this application, but under the list of events that you're looking to get approval for, types of events, beer festivals, concert dances, <coughs> cornhole, horseshoe, food festivals, wiffle ball, kick games, barbecue, car shows, volleyball, flag football, croquet, and bocce ball. Is that it? You're not, do you're not looking to do concerts there? Then why in the why in your first part do you talk about the location of the stage is to reduce? So you're coming in kind of I am mid pass. I am. So <coughs> I, 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 I'll let the chairman. You want me to explain that? So when I, that's an amended application. I haven't got to speak tonight, obviously. Okay. But this is a, a, a an amended application to what we had spoken to about last month. Okay. Um, it was clear to me that three or four. I there, I can go through my whole list once we open up to that discussion. Um, but those are the things I am now amending and applying for tonight. Okay. Um, so my, my point is, though, that it has changed from what you were looking to do before. Only because of what was asked of me by the chairman. I have, uh, I feel as though the, the definitions do need to be uh, questioned, but to move this thing along and not be another three and a half hours, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll shorten it to a site plan review that involves those events only. Well, we're, we're getting off the motion. Motion is being seconded to redefine amusement facility, which I don't think we have the authority to without the townspeople saying, this is what we meant, a spectator is a spectator. And just like anything else, if we wanted to change, we would have to go in front of the town in the town vote. The town has voted that in. And until that's changed, I don't see how we can we cannot personally change it. I don't think I don't think he's asking to change it. No. I think what he is suggesting no, he's asked, he's saying that a facility, a amusement facility, does not have spectators. No. I think what he's saying, let me try to clarify. Okay. I'm not trying to do your no. I think he's trying to say that he wants this board to interpret what they're applying for is not an amusement facility. Is that what it is? That's correct. That's what he's saying. Not not that not to change the order. We put restrictions on him. That's why his he has changed from what he asked for. Because we declared it an amusement facility. Okay, but are you talking about what he planned before or his new plan? I'm what talking about before. the original plan. <clears throat> we want fair in our, in our decision. But I think it should have been open to discussion to determine whether it was or, or not. Yeah, two and a half I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that that ordinance is, you know, it should be changed, I'm sure. <clears throat> you know, it's not, it's not directly saying you can't do this. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Chairman, just to, to, to clarify what we're talking about, first of all, our ordinance does not identify an amusement facility. It also does not identify any facility that is utilized as a venue for spectator or participation. So we're, we're kind of arguing a non-point here because none of those issues are addressed specifically or even uh, figuratively in the... Uh, in the zoning ordinance, so if you read the ordinance, <coughs> which which ordinance? Amusement facility. All it, there's nothing in here that discusses amusement facility. What it what it, the definition talks about is amusement device. No. Go on further. In your village, Page seventy to, or uh, seventy nine or eighty. Talk about that. Okay. Then we had two and a half hour discussion last time. <clears throat> yeah, and, and likewise, as, as we've heard already, it, it defines an amusement facility which offers for hire to the general public access to structures, mechanical or electrical contrivances or other facilities which are intended primarily for entertainment, amusement, or recreation. 
in which the patron is engaged on the premises as an active participant rather than a spectator, where such uses occupy in excess of 20% of the total interior exterior public area. <coughs> we are not seeing any <coughs> electronic conveniences, contrivances, vehicles, you know, all of the uses that he's, he's discussed do not they meet, the, meet the definition. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> the only one I have a squawk about to know this is car show. That's a uh, spectator. And you're the one that told us that you were not going to park on Three Covered Bridge Road. Not, or not three covered bridge. Not you came up bridge. last uh, meeting and said, on the floor right uh, <laughs> we, would, we would have it on all property. We have to park on Three Covered Bridge Road, which we don't want to. That was, that was what you told me. No, no, that's not what I said. Yeah. That's not what I said. What, what I said, Connie, um, if I may, is I could easily turn Three Covered Bridge Road into a parking lot and have as many cars go down there and just park, and we can have our events on 2415 Red Hobbs, and I'd have absolutely zero control of that parking lot. People will come in and go all they want. They can take a right, they can take a left. I'd have no control. With this opportunity and what we're trying to do here, I have control. No one's going down Three Covered Bridge Road past our property because they have to park at Hobbs. You can't stop because that's a public. I can stop them a lot more than if I had a parking lot there. Oh, I mean, but I mean, you can't. Please don't do something. <laughs> you know what I mean? I understand what you mean, what your meaning is, yeah. but. Uh, and and I, I, don't, I don't mean to sound presumptuous about that. It's, we have options. And, and I, I prefer this option over others. All right, any more discussion on the facility? I'll call for a vote for the motion. Read the motion, please. Um, to consider this application is not an amusement facility. But this application or the first one? This one. No. No. That's what I'm saying. I, I'm, I'm not clear who we're voting on. Hey, you. Uh, all right. This, the motion I brought up right now is because he came in here. Oh, with no, a Dennis, Dennis. Please just tell me, was the motion on his original application or is it on his amended conditional it's application? On the, the original. Where we have okay. the concert and, and, and the other things that are complete. So it was incomplete. It was no, I know. I just wanted to make a motion to get this out of the way so that he knows exactly what he's able to do rather than not know. If it was on the, the original, pardon? if it was on the original conditional uh, application, I would say it'd have to be a no vote. But if it's on the second application, then we should vote yes. Because he's changed it. But I'm not trying to sound funny, but you, now I'm completely confused. If I'm hearing Denny correctly, he wants to go back to the last meeting. Reverse the vote. And allow him. We did not vote. That's the because problem. We never had a vote. All right. Oh, but you want opinion. you want him to be able to proceed on his first application, not the amended one. Well, he's a business. Yep. Okay. His original when he came in here was he asked for a lot more than what he could have now. Correct. He went back and amended it because we considered it an amusement facility. I'm saying after three weeks of looking at this and reading it and thinking about it, I don't believe it falls on an amusement facility. Period. Okay, so he shouldn't be restricted if he if he wants to apply. Is it the first original? We're only in open. We're just in discussion on this right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
He should well, be no, able. No, but if you voted on this tonight, he could proceed with this on the site. Correct. Room. Correct. Dennis, if I may, gentlemen, if I may, just very quickly. Ash, do you want to get it rolled back, and then you got to go back and file another application, or do you want to proceed on this one? And that's not to say that his motion will be passed. Of course. I mean, I. I'd well, like, I mean, before you say something, yeah. Ash, the attorney last week for that meeting gave us four examples and said these are spectator bullet, and I would have to defend it in court. So that is why Ash changed it. All right. But you forced him into that, and we shouldn't have. No, we didn't force him yeah, into that. Yeah, we did. It. You did. I and asked you said it was an amusement facility, and we didn't discuss it. Nobody yeah. voted on it. Yeah. You made that determination. No, I didn't. You yes, yes. asked. I asked him. That. I asked him for a legal opinion. The attorney actually made it. Pardon? The attorney actually made it. Yeah. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. He said he, he, did. he wasn't sure. He made a lot of bucks in the, he did not come right out and say. Basically, he did. And he was, uh, yeah, you know, you're talking about this amusement facility. I was on the planning board when we wrote that original law um, with Gil Adams, Milton Dow, Dana Thompson, uh, Vinnie Vaccaro. And it was because of the amusement facility at the tramway. That was the reason that whole thing was brought up. You know, it wasn't to stop, you know, concert someplace. It was to stop that facility there. What? Why? We, they had problems there. And I think, Rick, you were a police officer at the time there. But, yeah, but uh, one, I yeah, don't remember I know, that. But two, that would have been in the commercial zone, which would be allowed even today in the commercial district. Right, but there was problems. And they wanted All right, but what I'm saying is that people. same facility would be allowable today right. in the commercial district. Correct. The right. question is, can you make that cross over into the village district? That's lot. where the rub it is. is. It's permitted. It is permitted. The amusement facility is permitted in the village district. Of course it is. So not by that definition where they become a spectator. No, no, no. no. It, it's a, it's a lot. Tanya permitted use. But not as a spectator. But no, I could have a. I could put a carnival in. Yeah. I, yeah. That's what we're talking about. The spirit of that ordinance that you all talk about is the fact that. They were doing it for a actual carnival or a, a, an actual amusement, like a fairground. It was. That had that nothing was, to do that with. Was, that was well after zoning. It that was, was by, that, that was, was well after zoning. That, that was, was five old, years after zoning. That was the old home week that used to run a carnival up there by the by it the was before the, It was before the old home week had the carnival there. Mm -hmm. The work went back. First guy was saying. Way back, Mr. Sorry. Chairman. Again, I, I want to reiterate that by definition, the proposed uses that we're, we're seeing in the site plan review application do not meet the definition of those facilities in an amusement facility. They are not vehicles for hire, mechanical or electrical contrivances or other facilities intended for entertainment, amusement, or recreation. So we're kind of we're arguing a moot point here contention that the attorney presented was the spectator part of that amusement facility saying that he did not believe a concert was a participant it was a more of a spectator and that's where the hang-up is on this ever since everybody started arguing about it, is what is a spectator in sport and what is a participant sport. If you want to call it a sport, so, whatever you want to call it. So by definition, a news amusement facility based upon our definition in our zoning an amusement facility and I'll read it again any commercial use which offers for hire to the general public access to all of those things and other facilities which intended primarily to provide entertainment 
and in which the patron is engaged in the premises as a participant rather than as a spectator. So, so what this is saying is an amusement facility requires, has, has a stipulation that the participants not are a, not spectators. Not so, a spectator. So, not a spectator. You're reading that wrong. No, no, you can't read it wrong. No, I think he's interpreting it wrong. He's reading it right. Wrong. But the question is, that's where it comes back to what Betty and I would Is a concert a spectator event? Or is it one way you actively This is what I'm arguing, Rick, that, that amusement facility is, is, an, is, a, is a facility in which the patron is engaged in the present premises as a participant rather than as, as a spectator. Correct. So if you have an event where you're, an expect, as you're, you're attending as a spectator, it is not by definition an amusement facility. But all these I other disagree. events are. I disagree with that's that. What that's what this says. That's what you interpreted it the play. It says, I disagree in with which the patron is engaged on the premises as an active participant Correct. rather Correct. than a spectator. Correct. So if we have a, an, a venue where the people are spectators, it does not meet the definition of an amusement facility. No, it is saying what is allowable at amusement facility is if they are active that is, participants. That is not what it says. That is exactly what it says. That's how you interpret it differently. But the whole idea is the issue of whether or not they're active participants or are they spectators. Why did you just say dance concert? It would have been easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wouldn't. <laughs> that's, I, that's the rub, is whether or not it's... I call for both. You've got to read it again, dear. <laughs> We're going by the new application? No. No, no. The, the no. old application. The old application. The old application. It don't make sense. It's incomplete. It's incomplete. So it it's hmm? automatic. No. Frank. No. Yes. 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 No. 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 No, Tavern. This is the base line. Sorry. Here we go. Here we go. And your new amended brought up to date application. Thank you very much because you did a good job. <laughs> Members of the board, Madam Secretary, folks in the audience. Um, there were some conditions at our last meeting, um, and I, I feel as though I successfully met those requirements that you had asked of me. I'm sure you might have some questions. I can certainly explain, but I would like to preface this with this is an amended application. Sorry. Right, motion to accept, accept motion is oh, Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion to carry. Thank you. Um, <coughs> So this is an amended application. You'll see there's a few things that have changed uh, on there. Um, I did include the deed. The deed is now in there. Um, the checklist with consistent names, that is now in there. Uh, detailed map showing plot requirements and specifications. We can go over that at, at the end of my list here. Uh, permitted assembly with conditions from the West Aspie Fire Chief. Uh, parking capacity in detail. It is on the map, though I did spell it out in the uh, uh, inf information letter that I provided. Uh, letter from KJN1 giving permission to use the parking uh, that was not signed by me. Um, that is in there as well. The uh, definitions uh, I've also kind of extrapolated on a little bit um, on the events that we're looking for. And I also included a little bit of a lighting plan. I was asked by Mr. Gillette to include the model number of uh, the model and uh, the brand and the model number of the lights that we uh, are using. Um, so that is now in that application as well. And uh, yeah, so pretty much pretty much <coughs> covered it. I did remove um, with with prejudice art shows. Um, you said I did add car shows, but I believe the conversation last week was or last month was car shows were allowed, art shows were not. I agree. Um, so that is why I'd, I'd really like to, with permission, be able to ask the board 
to have the art shows and art exhibits. The, I'm, I'm a little unclear as to why that can't be. Uh, a, a piece of art can easily be someone's car. Um, and you pretty much do the same thing. You walk around and you stare at it. So that I would like to, at the very end of this, ask if we can at least have that. I do think that in economic development, to revitalize a spark is always in the art. So I, I would really like to add that. It's important to what we're trying to do. Um, I did take off the concerts, of course, and I took off, I think, move, movies was, I think, the other one. Um, any, any questions so far? I would simply recommend that you take the art part to the ZGA. Make the night easier, I think. Oh, that's just my opinion. It's up to the board. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why I need to take an art show to a ZGA meeting, but I, I was I respect that. With the well, two and a half hour discussion last time, she took a whole meeting. I didn't, the, I didn't do anything. But, uh, why is a car show an allowed use in the art show? I don't know why you now that there's an argument over it. That was, that was a one of, 45 yeah. minutes of the discussion mm -hmm. last week. That was the whole participation spectator. Right. Okay. And I, and I get that. But if all you're doing is looking at art, or all you're doing is looking at cars, I think what he's pointing is, quite frankly, it ought to be both or none. Yeah. If the if the ruling is that it's a spectator event and therefore not allowable, then the car show should go. And if not, then the art show. I mean, I what Ash is saying is quite frankly perfectly sensible. Mm -hmm. That they are really the exact same thing. It's just you're looking at something different. I wasn't here for the last two and a half hours. I did watch most of the meeting on. Of an oversight, but I, didn't, I don't. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me that one's allowed and the other one isn't. I, I, I my recollection is that the cash was for too. So I, I that's why I question it. That. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So, uh, so to continue on, the, uh, the big discussion, Connie, the uh, chairman that you brought up was the parking. Uh, you had asked me to uh, figure out what the parking was, and, and according to our zoning ordinance, a restaurant is three people to one parking space. Based on square footage. Well, well, so let me explain myself. So, if our, in our application, we're asking to close down the upstairs of uh, Hobbs. Uh, how you provide the parking is that is your business decision. We are not going to sit here and mandate that you shut down the upstairs of Hobbs because we can't. What we can say to you is that you've got, what, 3,200 something feet divided by 50, so many cars. That's what you have to provide parking for. Yes. Okay. And, and that's what I was just going to explain how I got to those numbers. <coughs> so we have 60, 60 spots that we feel could provide adequate parking for um, the 3,250 square feet that we're asking for to use of the field. I also did the math. It's like 2.7% of the total uh, land mass of that parcel. So I'm not asking for a lot of space. Um, but you did ask me to provide the parking in. We well, did. I mean, uh, but I just wanted to show you how we came to that number. I, I understand you can't ask us to close the upstairs, but it's something that we also have. We can't. You have to buy. We have to control both the, locations. The way you. That's right. You want. That's right. And if you want to, you you're going to put up uh, something on, and you got ten cost <coughs> spaces. You could open the upstairs. Oh, I can. I got room. Yep. So, I mean, that's that's a business decision. All we ask is, when you have the event on Three Covered Ridge Road, which you want to do, the ordinances say you must have one space per 50 foot of assembly. Yep. So, that's what you've done. And that's what I asked you to do. That's correct. So, um, so with, with all of that being said, 
Um, I feel as though we can move forward uh, and, and hopefully this board will grant approval for this application of site plan review. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to enlighten. Rick, uh, the only question I have asked is, I mean, presumably the events you want to do are on weekends, most times. I, I would mean, think. It, it varies. I mean, to be honest, events are great to have on off nights okay. to pat. Sure. But, so, but some of the times, well, I guess my concern would be, are there normally on a weekend in the summertime, are there enough available parking spaces on the, that the restaurant is not using to accommodate an event next door mm -hmm. and still cover? Yes. There's that many spaces available on a regular basis even on a weekend? Yep. Yeah. Okay. You look at that thing, Rick, he's, you're going on the septic system, aren't you? Not Park. with... with with the park? On on which property? On the Hobbs property? Yeah, there's a septic system there, but it's designed for the load. Well, I mean, that's yep. why I asked you. No, that's a great question. Because, I mean, I know that you've got a septic out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's your property, you want to park on the septic. You break pipe, that's not the dental problem. Well, that septic that Leachfield didn't believe in two parking areas, right. I think. No. Right. In between the two 14 roads. Leachfield's on the island. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. <coughs> Any other questions? Anyone in the audience like to speak? Yeah. Yes, um, sir. Sorry, Brian. It comes from the road. Um, what is listed? I have never seen this application. What is listed on there? That he wants to do. Uh, you read it for you. I read it right here. Go ahead, uh, We've got beer festivals, uh, contra dances, cornhole games, horseshoe games, food festival, wiffle ball games, kickball games, barbecue competitions, car shows, volleyball, flag football. Croquet and bocce ball. What are the requirements on the beer festival? That's not to state like that. No. We have no control over that. The only control, the fire chief has control for public safety. Um, as far as the liquor goes, Ash has explained that he can get a, what, I, what do you call it? An outdoor. With the Liquor Commission, that would be an extension of service. Extension of service, which he has to provide safety, et cetera. The Liquor Commission has to accept that. So that's out of our hands. I mean, a lot of stuff in this, in this ordinance is that we end up more control over. Unless we say, no, you can't have a beer festival. That would be the only control we would have. Ash. I, I would like to add to the beer festivals and anything that involves alcohol out there. So it is a state law. Um, you can only have one entrance, entrance in and one entrance out. And that would be across the bridge that's in between the two Hobbs properties and covered bridge. So there will be no one by state law can leave in any other location on that property. They have to cross that bridge. Yes, Peter. And Ash, does the uh, state require you to monitor the area? Of course. It, all, it all, always has to be someone there to monitor of everything course. that's happening. Yep. Yep. It's, it's, no, it's an extension of service. It's no different than if we were under a roof. So we, if, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that would affect Hobbs' liquor license themselves. Of course. I mean, if they should, because it's, it's, it's all one thing, of course. So if they caught somebody underage drinking over there, oh, yeah. that would jeopardize the restaurant, oh, yeah. I mean, which obviously there's you ain't going to do. There's a lot on the line. And, and we understand the responsibility that comes with alcohol. Um, you know, I, I, I make it every single day. The more of it I make, the less I drink. But <laughs> the, it, it, nonetheless, I, know, I understand it and I respect it. And our staff goes through, uh, we have state uh, regulation that, that makes us, requires us to have 
uh, MTS management training and certification every two years. And we also have team programs which we pay for for all of our staff uh, for their training um, on alcohol while serving. So I mean, we take it very, very seriously. Our, our liquor insurance bill would scare most. It's, it's important that we respect that. And everything we do, uh, what we've put into there is on the line. You know, we're, I think we're a respectable business and I feel as though that we've proven that over the last three and a half years. And I also, I did raise my hand uh, for another reason, Chairman. It was because I, while they read that list, I just want the butters to know that's not all at the same time. <laughs> I, I'm not being wise. Like, there's not a horseshoe pit over there. There's not a cornhole pit over there. There's not, all of these things aren't going to be set up. There's no, there's, there's again, there's not going to be anything built or anything that's permanent. Um, we, as, as a business and through the site plan review process, I'm uh, obligated to list the items that I would like to do over there. Whether we have a wiffle ball tournament or not, I'd love to see it. It would be great community. But I, 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 have to, I am forced to list out the items that we would like to have. You could have two or three of those events at the same time. Well, oh, certainly. I mean, a horseshoe pit takes up no space, and, yeah. and a cornhole board is very movable. Um, we most certainly could. Any other questions? Well, yes. do, you have, do you have a sense uh, going forward, and I know this is subject to change, on how many beer festivals you would plan on doing in the course of a, in the course of a summer? I'll, I'll be honest. There's so many around here now that they, they're a bit watered down. Um, we're starting to see, rather than just beer fest being general beer fest, we're actually seeing beer fest becoming specific types of beer fest, so a stout festival or an IPA mm -hmm. festival. Um, Honestly, it's it's a fall thing for us. I I doubt we'd even do one in the summer. It's not to say we won't, and I can't say that we won't. But um, you know, much like uh, applications in the past, this is not a plan to have something over there every single weekend. And and that's why. And the reason I ask that is not because of me personally giving the rats. It's I'm I'm wondering if if it wouldn't appease the neighbors more to know. You know, and I'm not. And I get that if you got disapproval, there's nothing that says you couldn't have one every weekend. And I'm, I'm not suggesting that you plan on that. And it may well appease some of those in the neighborhood. And that's the reason I asked it that way. And I, and I understand why you're not going to be specific specific. But would it be fair to say that you wouldn't be looking to do more than a half a dozen a year? I, I, I can't answer that. Okay. But I, I would be hard pressed to see that happen. It takes an awful lot of energy. The only way I would see that happen is if we were to team up with a nonprofit. Uh, otherwise, you have an event like a beer fest every <clears throat> every two weeks. It waters it down. No one's going to be there by the fourth. Mm -hmm. right. And and that was the same with the concerts. Even though that's not on the discussion tonight, I wouldn't have them every single weekend. But it would be a, you know, because it waters it down. You, you do a, something like that, it waters everything down. So it's it's it has to be strategic, and it wouldn't be uh, honestly. It would be it would be respectful to the abutters. Our goal isn't to. I know we've been illustrated a little bit as. as monstrous, but it's it's not the ambition of, of OBS to do anything that would change the landscape, um, change the, the fabric of that community. You know, it's, it's not our goal. So. May I ask Ash one question? Are we safe to assume then, Ash, that perhaps like your barbecue competitions might be an annual event, a one time a year annual event? Yep like other types of comp competitions that people look forward to each year. Yep. Uh, similarly, perhaps the car show could be a one-time event in that regard because you know people look forward to that type of an event happening every year as opposed to, like you say, every week. I'm, I'm not looking to have a, have cars park on that grass. No, no I understand. Week. But I'm just saying, like the barbecue competition or the food festival, for example, yep. it would be an annual, I would assume it would be an annual yep. event or be safe to assume that? It, it, it most certainly could be. Yep. Okay. Great. We like to team up with us. Oh, then uh, when uh, the car shows are there, you'd still be coming in that way. You talk about the beer fest coming across the bridge. Do you plan on putting a bridge across so that those people are not going to be coming in and out as well? Certainly a fair question. So 
uh, also in that application, um, you'll see that um, certain events I've, I've asked uh, Jimmy Eldridge, Chief Jimmy, to have dispatch uh, or an officer, a detail officer at the end of that driveway to ensure that no one goes down. I just, I think that it's, it's questionable because once you've got people going in and out, in and out, in and out. Of course. And, and well, on I, the other one, you've got control of it because it is your property coming across from one piece. Even though there's two districts, you still got the control. So I guess, I guess, you know, speaking for the rest of, of our group, we couldn't make it tonight. Um, you know, we're concerned with, with a car show going in and out as well. Um, you know, I think that ought to be possibly if it you know we're not against the car show but the tra the traffic would be the would be the question Joe Joe Deegan, Center Rossipi <clears throat> I have buildings in the village district I have I own buildings in this village district we have concerts and the concert is a big word we have music one, it was at the town hall, then it moved right down here at the downtown. I don't understand why Ash can't have his music. It's not going to have the Commodores show up with five track the trailers full of sound equipment and stage equipment there. It would be small events. That's the one thing I just wanted to say. And second thing, have you guys ever been to a hotel or a restaurant and been to a wedding? Or been to paint night or been to whatever? Or your wife's been to that? That's the, that's the scale he's on. He's not on the venue that's over in Guilford. And then when I was talking to this lady at the last meeting, she moved on to a quiet street, and she did. But due diligence needs to be had. She moved into a village district, which, which right at this time is quiet. But the village district is more or less a commercial zone waiting to happen. It is. It is. You can have automotive stuff going on. You can have whatever. You can have almost anything going on in the village district. It's even more allowable because the setbacks become much smaller. It's not as fast spaced. So what they moved into was a village district dot 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 commercial zone. It is. It may not be labeled it, but it is. That's the, so the due diligence there wasn't done. I'm sorry, it wasn't. Well, you could have you. No, I'm sorry that you didn't do your that, that you didn't do your due diligence and not and not looking <laughs> at what's there. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. But but um, yeah. So so that's really all I need to say. Um, it's also just as true. That, I mean, that, I'm just simply saying that's very condescending to her, and I don't even know who she is. But the fact of the matter is, well, but the fact of the matter is that you can make the same argument that they moved into a village district dot 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 residential, which is what it's been for 75 years. But so, it's not a residential. Hi. I, but it's not a residential zone. I live a residential zone. But now, I just want to We made it. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, surprisingly, I was going to make that same statement that that is a commercial area. It is, it is it's been a district, so uh, you know, that's what it is. I, I understand their concern, and and you have a right to have those concerns, but you can't put a you can't take a business and say you can't do anything because I don't want it there. I don't think I'm anybody said that though. No, but I, well, that's uh, in fairness, I don't think anybody's saying that. The question is, what is an allowable business in the district? Not whether or not it's an allowable business. That particular property was a commercial. It was a real estate office. Mm -hmm. And I think you would absolutely agree that the impact of that neighborhood is probably a little bit different that there's five cars at a real estate office versus what it is that Ash has proposed. That's the, that's the $64,000 question. It's not that there, whether or not there is a business, but what is what is allowable as a business in that? You got all kinds of issues coming there. Right. When you open up that bridge, and, all right. And I would say the application in front of us, everything here, according to our attorney and according to the way we've defined it, is allowable in that mm -hmm. area, correct? That With the modifications that he's made? Other than the question of a car show, that was the only thing I heard. Okay. I mean, I, I could have sworn that he said yeah. that, but. 
or anyone else which discuss this. The only other thing, Ash, uh, if you put forth what your hours would be, <clears throat> not for cleanup, like you say, 10 o'clock cleanup, would you be willing to cut it off and say 8 30, 9 o'clock? No. I don't feel it's like fair to ask of the business. No, I'm, a I'm asking you that you're saying, well, 10 o'clock, we're going to be all cleaned up. That's your statement. Now, how long is it going to take you to clean up? If you stop at 9 o'clock, you have an hour to clean up. If it takes you an hour and a half to clean up, I'm just going by what you've stated. Yeah, but again, by, by the application, and that's a fair question, uh, Chairman. I, the, the, what I'm asking for here doesn't revolve, involve much cleanup. Uh, that didn't change from the first application, which required, which I was asking for uh, music events. You're talking cornhole boards and horseshoe pits and a cooler with a couple taps on it. I mean, we'll be out of there pretty fast. My goal isn't to extend our labor. Labor is the largest cost in any business. So it would be wise for us to be as efficient as possible. I think as long as he meets any town of ordinances, he's fine. Mm -hmm. What are our ordinance noises are? Well, the ordinance is 77, That's which is construction. And Ash says it's 11.59 as far as police department goes. So I'm just trying to say to these neighbors, Okay, if we agree, if Ash agrees to 9 o'clock, it, it seems reasonable to them, they can go to bed. I, that's all I'm saying, Ash. I don't think we'll mean, have anything over there where it would impact our butters where they cannot go to bed. Would you be willing? No, that wouldn't. I was going to say, <laughs> you all brought it up that there was a neighbor at one of the festivals and they had to have a noise device at the edge of the property line so the neighbors were not, I'm not going to say, ask you to do that. Well, if the town would have proved to pay for that bill, I would be more than happy to. <laughs> I don't look at me, don't look at me. <laughs> that's your, that's your guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's budget season, but it ain't I, I will say I will say this. So we, we were doing some research and we're still working on it. We have a Harvard professor and doctor working on who is strictly on physics and we're working on the sound and action and figuring out what the decibels will be at that at, at a neighbor's door or at the edge of their abutting property closest to us. So we are working on that. Just just now we're we're interested. <laughs> to see if this guy can nail it. So well, the, the, there are ways of figuring that out, the, but I was Yeah. It does uh, bring out into the question of noise. So that's another reason why. Yes. Hi. Gail Howard West Ossipi. Um, first of all, there's a noise ordinance in place. You, we can't the board can't ask him to shut down something. He already has to abide by rules, number one. And number two, with all due respect to everybody, Hobbs has gone above and beyond. They've hired somebody to check the decibel level. And I, I get it, because I live in a development and a neighborhood, and you know what? Sometimes it gets noisy in there, and sometimes people have parties and when your windows are open, I understand where the, anybody's coming from. But reality is, they've gone above and beyond. And I think, you know, we can talk about being condescending and this and that, but you know what? We need to be respectful of all how, how Hobbes is trying to be respectful. And I think we're losing sight of what the basic thing that they want to do. And we should be happy because Hobbes is trying to bring development and to bring people into this area and to bring you know money here 
And I think that we're losing sight of all of that. And you know what? To say that something's been some way for 75 years, life is about change, and we all have to be accepting. And if it's going to be detrimental, no. But you have to be accepting a change. That's part of life. And I, with all due respect, I think they've proven that they're respectful. And I think we're being disrespectful because this has gone on and on and on. And thank you for listening. Number one, this is only the second meeting which we have had on Hobbs. What else went on was not this board. Okay, I beg your pardon. But I Number still think they're being respectful. Number two, we have to go by the laws that were passed by this town. When Ash came in the last time, right. we gave him a conditional approval. Right. We allowed him to talk. We allowed the audience to talk. So we're not trying to hamper him. He came in. He did a wonderful job amending his. And that's my point, uh, Mr. Chairman. He has amended it. Right. And, 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 and I we think are. That now we are expanding on that uh -huh. so that everybody knows exactly what Ash <laughs> should do and what the town should do. And I think he's been very clear. He with has. With all due respect. And I and, think he's gone above and beyond. And that's all my point was. He's gone above and beyond you know, we, to change things and to be respectful. We're, we're, we're trying to be respectful to Hobbs and uh, to the town, but we are governed by certain things in here, certain things in here, and they all got a mesh. And as far as the noise ordinance goes, that's 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. After yes, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. That's construction. Right. That's construction only. And there, is, and only. there is no other noise <laughs> on this in the town of Austin. I had to call. I know a little something about this. Um, I really do. The 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. is for construction. It has no bearing whatsoever right. on what he's proposing. Right. It comes under the disorderly, stat disorderly conduct statute mm -hmm. of the state IRSAs. Mm -hmm which then govern what is a reasonable period of time to shut down. So it does, there is no local noise, right. or, noise ordinance whatsoever that governs concerts. Not concerts, but noise. 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 1159, you call the police station, they'll tell you they can't do anything until 1159. Yes, I agree. It's not, there's not a local, there's no local sound ordinance, noise ordinance. I'll let everybody go one more time and then we'll go home. <laughs> I, I would I would just like to ask the board regarding noise. I I'm going to go with what is what I've applied for here. But uh, the selectmen and uh, the town's attorney work diligently to come up with a new temporary event ordinance. And inside of that, I think it has a really interesting uh, message in there regarding noise and inconveniences to its neighbors, and that being complementary and also. Um, part of the fabric of our towns and our uh, community. So I'm not looking to, to, to be loud and obnoxious over there. I feel like we've done a really good job in branding ourselves and I'd like to continue that brand. Anyone else like to speak? Yeah. Uh, I don't believe I have any other questions. Huh? Anyone else? We, we need a motion, do we? I just, I just have one thing to state and that is that you know, relative to the to the, the noise levels, the, the actual decibel levels, you know, the fact that you're taking the, the opportunity and doing the due diligence to do a study to determine that at the property edge that the, the, the noise levels are at a reasonable level. Um, and there are national standards <coughs> that identify what reasonable level is, that I think that would certainly satisfy the, the concerns that the, the abutters and, and the local residents have on Covered Bridge Road. Yeah, I'm doing that just yeah. for our own knowledge. Yeah, I think that would be would be good to see as well because certainly right. as, as things progress in the town, we could see this come up again and having that piece of information at hand for us to do our job better would be good. I'm sure I'm 
other than I just want, I'm not sure what we're voting for. What, what are, we, are we voting on approving this, accepting it as complete? We've what, already what? accepted the application as complete. So tonight? Tonight. But then do you grant? No. There has to be a motion if they want to approve the site plan as presented. But don't you, don't, what I'm saying is, don't the, is there not any process now by which the neighbors have an opportunity to... The, the uh, neighbors had the opportunity. But, well, but wait a minute. We ju they haven't seen this plan. We just got it tonight. They have 30 days to appeal it. But you, you don't give them a chance in advance before you approve it. We never have. Never I'm have. just asking. I'm, I'm, I don't normally sit here. I mean, if, if anyone would like to see the rest of the plan, well, there will be more than willing to take a five minute break and let you look at them. Make a motion we approve. Motion has been made to approve the site plan Second. as Second. presented. presented. Should we be calling this the amended site plan review? No. no. We accepted the, the application as complete. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Yep. Tim, I you second to this. Yes, I did. Okay. Oh, Peter, so did so. Peter. Get it first. I don't split his. You laid tough. Flip a coin. You laid Willie's. <laughs> Any discussion? My only question is, are you going to make a decision on the car shows? Is it permissible or isn't it? That's in there. I know it's in there. It's in there. And right now, he's allowed to do it with the motion that Roy made. Okay. Now, if you want to amend the, the motion, Can I you may. Uh -huh. Can I add our chance? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I mean, I don't mean to sound funny, but I... I, I, I understand what you're saying. But I mean, he presented it, nobody cut it out. I raised the point. And... He yes, sir. I, 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 I could have it. I was talking about it. I don't see why I couldn't. I removed our shows out of it from the last application well, I, because I, I had I thought it. that we had discussed car shows, too. So we was, did. And we took car shows out. That was one of them. So, uh, motion stands. Oh, we either second it, right? It's been second. No, you did, Tim. Okay, yeah, my second stands. <laughs> your second stands. <laughs> you want to withdraw your second I and remove our shows or amend this motion. You either vote it up or down. Motion has been made and seconded. There's no more discussion. Call for a vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. We have a site plan. 30 days starts tomorrow morning. Give me a deal. Thank you all very much. We try to move. Did I get a car shop? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you didn't get the car shop, but you got a car shop. Right. Just put the car in the trunk. Hmm? And on the car. <laughs> we turn them all down. Whole business. The boss pet. Anyone want to make a motion? Motion on what now? On the motion. What was your motion the first time, Roy? 
guy. You'll have to read that. Oh, my Lord. If you would. <laughs> I think it was basically to use what money was there and nothing more, right? Yeah. Right. That's the rest, yeah. Just basically do chips Oh, stuff. that's visited at the site. I, I went down and visited, and uh, I wouldn't put a cent in it itself, but we do have that money to spend on it. Well, it's not a question of money. It's a question. It's not reclaimed. Well, we spending. We have to put it into it. Right? Came from the court ten years. You saw it. Yeah. Roy, I saw it. I saw it. Peter, you have not seen it. I looked at the pictures and I, I took a glance at it as I drove by. You didn't see much driving by. Eh? <laughs> I slowed down. Way back. I slowed way down. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sorry. I saw it. I saw it. Yeah. The majority of the board has seen it. Did you see a lot? I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> You're enough about it. I just still don't have to. <laughs> she could probably draw it, but she's at this point. We uh, have got to make point A. Either we, we call it good and the money just sits there. And I don't know whether Sager can claim it, but it's not reclaimed. See, there's, there's some things that could be done to improve it, like what mm Roy -hmm. was saying. They probably wouldn't uh, use much more money than there. But I wouldn't be putting more into it because if you review the place, I don't know, I don't think it was the owners that are there now. But there are piles and piles and piles of rock. It is the owners that are there now, and that's why we're over there. The only place that we're talking about reclaiming yep, is way in the back. Yep. The, the rocks are between the boundaries. Yep. That is the boundary. So those rocks have got to stay there. Well, I'm not talking about moving them. Cost your fortune. Well, yeah. you can't. They're boundary boxes. Yeah. Right. My proposal is to put off a bit and have carefully small equipment. We stay in small equipment, a lot of hand work, and chip all around what's already growing and throw chips on the piles and call it good. If anything you disturb now, you'll be destroying stuff that's already growing, including on the piles. I think that's the best way out in a town proceeding where they want to have to it because then we can release it. It's up to the slate. It's a commercial that. property and someday somebody will do something with it anyways. So is that a motion? Well, that would be my motion at this point, yes. I'll second that. Well, I have a different opinion, but you may be second that. <laughs> and discussion. I'll open for discussion. Um, the only thing I, I, I was going to say, Roy, before you made your motion was that if we can actually stipulate that we expend the monies that are set aside to reclaim the rear portion of the site by definition, because that's it's not the front portion. If we do it to our definition, there ain't enough money. Well, I'm just saying, well, that's why I swear you, that's why I worth the way I worth No, it. I'm just saying, but by means of spreading wood chips to a depth of some dimension. Yeah, it'd be at least six inches. Yeah, let's put that right. in the motion. Because it's going to settle down in three or four. Right. It'll hold the moisture and everything will come back and it'll be green. Right. In a couple of years, you'll have raspberries early on. Right. right now, it's just gravel between stuff that Mother Nature sold to reclaim right. their own. And, and I, think, I think if somebody walked them through it, what we want, when, they, when the bids put out, we have a walk through day. And I think that would probably work. Yes, yeah, sure. from, from the Silic Men standpoint, the problem is we have no idea what the hell you want. And, well, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny, no, but, no. but what came to us uh, well, was I, I, I simply would be glad, to... I'd be glad to walk you down and show you something. But, but listen to me. It's not about showing me even. It's about coming up with something when when what we got initially was to put out to bid right. the reclamation right. of the Morse Bay. Well, what we have the to hell define. does that mean? We have to define what that reclamation is. We need to be able to put something out that is descriptive enough to tell people what it is they're bidding to, for. To, 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 the, let, me, let me finish, Roy. I'm sorry. Then, depending on what the bid comes back at, if the bid comes back at a whole lot more money than what they have, then you need to trim down what it is that you're the scope, requiring the scope in order work. to be able to do it within that money. Right. But right now, what I'm saying is we need to have something somewhat definitive to allow people to know what it is that they're bidding on. Okay. 
foot chips around the existing vegetation there now and over the hills. Okay, but how big an area? You see what I'm saying? It's not what like you big? know is going on. We need to be able to put out so that the public can oh, know. Oh. The area we are talking about <coughs> is an acre and a half. Okay. There are two piles to the right as you drive in and one pile against the bank and next the to the state. Roy and I disagree. Rick and I kind of agree. Those piles should be spread. You're not going to ruin that much vegetation. There is asphalt in the front part of this lot that if you spread the gravel over it and seeded it, then it would grow eventually down through that asphalt and you would regreen that place. I would not touch anything on the left hand side of the, as you face the pit, the state side. I would touch, leave that alone. There's a nice valley in there. Mm -hmm. It's very well wooded, but the right hand side is not as developed and you would not sacrifice that much natural vegetation that there is there now by spreading those piles. But you'd have none when you spread the piles. You'd kill it all. That's why you spray it with a conservation. That's why you spray it. And according to the attorney, there's a $50,000 lien on that property already. And then if we went over the $6,800, that we would just tack it onto the lien. Yes, you can tack it onto the lien, well, we but the back. money needs to come from someplace mm -hmm. to we have spend 40, it. We have 4200 bucks left. Okay. We could spend that of our money. <laughs> no, you can't, no, because can't. that's not what it was appropriated for. No. My, my, my point, uh, let me finish. My point is, if right now, based on what you're telling me, what I have for information to put out to bid, as one of the select men is, <laughs> that you want to reclaim one and a half acres of an old, gra no. an old gravel bed. It's an acre and a half and that you're going to end up one and a half acres. with a three quarters of an acre, I would say. Well, we're reclaiming the whole one acre and a half by definition. But you're not touching a certain spot, so you're not reclaiming it. Yeah, we are. We're putting chips down as the whole was the motion around everything. You're saying That's why there's a lot of handwork. That's why it's got to be explained. You, when right, when right. you go out there and you, de you level the pile, you're going to devastate what little growth there is. And you set it back. What do you put out? Yeah. Or, or, an acre and a half. Could you go and get that and pile, please? People go up there, the most farm area. More growth there in the picture show. You, might you, can, you can do, that's called an RFP, and that's right. a request for proposal versus putting it out to bid. Right. Where, but again, you still have got to give people some parameters on what it is that they're looking at. That's why I said, if you put out an RFP for them to reclaim one and a half acres of an old gravel bed, right. then you may well have different people or individuals come in and say, okay. this is what I would do and this is how much I'll do it for. This is Morgan. This is the front. <laughs> this is towards the state, state pitch there. Yep. There's the pile. That's one pile. That's the bank. That's the bank on the growth. back. That's why on I the said, back. That's why I said wood chips are out there. This is from the pile. The pile is over there. This is the bank in my state. I don't know why he took so many pictures of the same thing. <clears throat> but that's the pile. There is another pile over here, plus this. That pile there we would not touch.
there you can see that pile, but there's another small one here. So, this is more uh, asphalt. And the other guy that cut the big timbers on the front, that's the, his property right here. That's actually got more growth here than he got over there. <clears throat> they got a fruit. Look at that one. I, I'm I'm pretty familiar with that property as I think down there, but I, I'm still going back to what I was just trying to say to Danny. Oh, I know. If you're going to put out for an invitation to bid, then you have to be very specific in what it is that you want. And right now, there isn't even a consensus amongst you board members as to whether or not the piles should be taken down or shouldn't be taken down, whether you should use wood chips or don't use wood chips. I'm oh, saying to you, you need to get together and tell us if you want bids, then you've got to be specific in what you want. If you want to put out a request for proposals, then you can say, we're looking to reclaim 1.5 acres. We can steer them, we can give them a, a, a copy of the tax map as to where it is and the area that you're talking about, and then they come back with a proposal on how to quote unquote reclaim it. Uh, they can make determination that. Well, depending again whether it's going to come in at six thousand dollars or sixty thousand dollars. Maybe the I don't know. Way over. Mr. 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 Chairman, way over. Mr. Chairman, may I ask Rick a question for clarification? Yep. Um, Rick, based upon the discussion that we're having here, do we need to actually define that in this meeting, or when you put this out to bid or? send out an RFP, don't you create a scope document at that point? Well, Based upon input from us. A little of both is true. Okay. If, I'm just trying to get some clarification. The, the planning board has been has been charged with overseeing whether or not this pit is reclaimed. I got you. I got you. That is well outside of what we are normally involved with right. on the board right. of select map. Right. So again, when you when you first sent this letter to us, which was to it's like okay what are they bidding on? Okay. I mean, there's, I, I nothing, there's nope, no nope. specificity to be able to even put an ad in the paper and say, that, you know, invite <laughs> no, you to understand. bid on what? So, I think that this, if you're going to do a request for bid, then you need to collectively say exactly what it is you want. Wood chips, how many? Are you talking spreading five tons of wood chips? Are you talking about spreading, spreading 100 tons of wood chips? I give the yardage, don't trouble. Well, or even yardage. If you're talking about pushing over the piles and pushing over the piles, you're talking about planting stuff. That's the first I've heard of it. Months. You, all of those things, if we're going to put it out to bid, all of those things need to be defined. The alternative is, is to do RFPs. Then I think we could simply hand them a copy of what you've got there um, with the tax map and say we're looking for proposals on how to best reclaim this 1.5 acres based upon the conditions at the site today and let them give you some ideas you may come up with something that's better than what you thought about people um, do it every day They're have I would presume I, I don't know if there's a bunch <coughs> of a business for reclaiming old sand pits but I don't know <laughs> and I'm not saying one's better than the other I'm simply saying if you want to go out to bid, then you've got to be a whole lot more specific than what I've heard tonight. Because I wouldn't have a clue right now. Realistically, having for, for, for what's left for money, uh, about all you're going to be able to do is probably spread six inches of wood chips over, over that area. And probably what, what we ought to do is drive some stakes in the ground to delineate the area. And uh, because it's, it's, I mean, what's going to end up happening if you just. You know, uh, These two piles, I mean, how, how big a pile are they? Not very. You know, one of them is about this tall and one is about 90. But when you start spreading them around, you, know, they get bigger, you just put equipment in, you don't run over a vegetation that's already grown. You're going to run I mean, over the red, red well, you're gonna, well, It's commercial property, so why, why, why screw with it? You know, let's just get something growing and let Mother Nature take its course at that point. And whatever you guys can do with the leans down the road, whatever this guy does, They'll work out something. <laughs> the leaves I'm not concerned about. We will no. get those back. I understand not. that. They they are they are priority right. lean and the town gets yeah. its money first. Right. It, it, so it'll, it'll be a commercial property some days where all the stuff will get removed eventually again anyways. The, the reason do we now own it or no? Not no. yet. We don't. That's still two years. That third year comes up, they come in the day before. Right. Every time. But once it's reclaimed, the town could pursue the $50,000 lien, which would probably uh, 
result in the town owning the property. Which would be a cleaner way of doing it right. once the reclamation is done. Right. Well, we have a problem. Because I, right I, here. I think we are, well, to be honest with you, I think. I think one we need to involve Rick Sager a little bit more in this discussion. Um, I think that you need to be a lot more formal, and I think the RFP is, is quite frankly maybe the way to go. So we don't have to come up. And with that, that you then definition. that you then even not specify what it is they do that, but that they reclaim, so as to satisfy the state law and the ordinance for reclamation of a, of a gravel bed. There's got to be rules. No, slopes are the only thing that they will, and you're supposed to put loom on it. Now, you cannot reloom that for $6,000. No, 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 you're probably talking $60,000. You're talking $100,000 just to do it. Well, I can't understand. There's a state approved the pit next to it. They didn't loom that either. It looks worse than this one. They have the loom on hand. But well, what? They got put out there, you know, what do I do? Well, that is. That's up to the state. Is there not a set of standards that that pit has to meet to, be, consi to, to be considered reclaimed? reclaimed? Yes. What are those standards? Oh boy, you can't even be. If, 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 we, if we go by the, our standards in this town, we might as well just let it like it is because you're well, talking from what I understand. You're talking, talking thirty, forty thousand dollars. Didn't didn't the town uh, spend a bunch of money in engineering for a reclamation plan? Not on that one. No, oh no. wait a minute. No, it was. Yes, they one. did. They didn't spend it. Or spent it. Yeah. Okay. Where them plans are, I don't know, but I'll tell you right now, it was. You ran out of money. Why it never went any further? They okay, used, but, but wait, they, they used so much for the for the plan. Rick, what ran this, out of money. Why this all came up was that every month, Sanger would send us a statement. You got sixty-eight hundred and some odd dollars for us. After about a year of this, I said, "Why isn't he paying us?" interest on that and come to find out a lawyer cannot have an interest bearing trust fund okay so we had a meeting with him on august was it august 1st or whenever the last meeting in august um in a non-public we discussed it and he told us what, you know, what we could do. So, we just wanted out of our hair. Well, in all reality, the Board of Selectmen should just take the money. <laughs> I mean, anything that, that gets done there is going to get undone. So. May, may, I, may I make I, a suggestion? I, but wait, but wait. <laughs> You're talking about, though, I mean, and this clarifies a little bit, but you're talking about the Board of Selectmen then putting out to bid to go on to private property to do work which does not satisfy right. the stand. That makes zero sense to me. Well, it was I agree. agree. By the court. Well, but wait a minute. If they're mandated, if they're mandated to do a reclamation down there, if it costs sixty thousand dollars, that's not our problem. Right. That's not your problem. Right. That's the owner's problem, and it would be incumbent upon the town attorney to take them back to court to compel their that abiding the by right. the court order, like if there is right. such a court order. Mm. I don't think. I don't think, in all sincerity, I don't think the answer right. is to do it half right. way. Because you're limited by what you have for money. Either they are required to reclaim or they're not. And if they are, then they are. I don't think this is I, I don't think this I is agree. the avenue that you should be going. I, I think we should if you withdraw your motion. I withdraw, withdraw my motion. second. Yeah. I withdraw my first and then <laughs> really go from there. Right and I and I, I guess I guess my question is why why the lawyer let this sit for so long? <coughs> he had he had charge of the money, so he knew it wasn't being done. And it was, it, the court said that this had to be done. I think somebody said 10 years, right? Wasn't it you already said this? This came about 10, 10 years I've been ago. here nine. Yeah. 
Well, the judgment's probably no good now if it's beyond 10 right. years. <clears throat> this is my ninth year, and it was a problem when I got here. So it's been a but that's a contempt, isn't it? I mean, pretty, pretty am, much. I, am I seeing this wrong? Yeah, no. <clears throat> Somebody's in contempt. I think Sager is. Well, just to, to continue the discussion a little bit, I think we certainly should find out, number one, what the what the actual terms of the court order were. Number two, um, get a firm definition do, of Do we turn it over to the selectmen to ask the attorney to do it, or we just ask the attorney to pursue it? be my question, I guess. Yeah. You got that, yeah. To be, uh, well, just real quickly here, just to paraphrase what's being said to me, uh, shown to me, back in 2003, the town of Osby did in fact sue the Mosses on behalf of the planning board seeking to force them to reclaim that gravel pit. The court shut down the pit, and in 2004, we obtained a judgment against them, ordered the Mosses to pay the town almost $30,000 in civil fines and attorney fees, and further ordered them to submit a reclamation plan. They didn't do anything. So in 2006, Attorney Sager filed a motion and they were arrested and forced to pay $30,000 in bail money. There was a new deal struck and of the 30K, 17K was paid to the town and the remainder stayed in his trust to account to pay for the reclamation. 2006, the planning board approved a reclamation plan. That was 2006. In 2006. I don't know where it is. Um, he, has, he, uh, he notes from the minutes dated February 6, 2007 that the rep reclamation plan was approved. In the latter half of 2007, letters went back and forth between Attorney Zupkis and him regarding the reclamation. 2008, members of the planning board inspected the property and determined it wasn't complete. He says, thereafter I sent a few what the hell are going on emails to our previous secretary and again never heard anything back and this is dated 2015 mm -hmm. so it sounds like there was a lot of previous action taken and arrested again um, and did another <laughs> well I mean uh, I, again I don't mean to sound funny but if one is there a reclamation plan that we can find that was approved by the planning board we will have, I will have to look if you can find that it seems to me and it, it, it has not been done that that's all the attorney would need to be Take them back to court and say, you right. must complete this plan by X date. Are we safe to assume that the town attorney today is the one that handled it? Is, yes. one of the so then he should have Correct. in his own records a copy of that. No, he, he says he never got it. He says in his email that he never got a copy of the reclamation plan. But it seems oh, in the minutes okay. that it was approved by this board. So before we go off half cocked and do a and do a, a piecemeal. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that says that we can't have select put out a bid or have bids come in for what it would cost to have that <coughs> one and a half acres be planted. Just That's as something to look at if right. we have to come up with a new, a new, number. Plan, a new number. Yes. Take example. Very spent. Yeah. Bosky has on A C D is the town holds, Harry Holtz, for reclamation of that property. It's probably around twenty five thousand dollars. By law, we can take that money and reclaim that if he did not reclaim it within two years. See, the problem with that becomes is that those figures are based on, you know, uh, La La Land. I mean, there's well, no way you can... On, it's based on the state <clears throat> rate. 
But I guess, again, I, to, to quickly that, answer that Denny's... Is only, that is only supposed to be for five acres. To quickly answer Denny's question, I think the answer is yes. We could put out for our fees. Mm -hmm. However, I do think it's unfair of companies to ask that they invest a whole lot of time right. providing you with information that you're not... You're just, just, to not, with not, just to come up with the information. Right. I think it's unfair to them. Right. But we have it the seems, information if there's a, a it reclamation It seems to me, plan. if there is a reclamation plan which is approved by this board in 2007, that they had already agreed to, there ought to be some correspondence along with that plan. We have another file. But there rather are more than files on the Morse pit, and I believe, if I remember <coughs> correctly, there is a reclamation plan in it. So. But rather than us going off half caught, putting out to bid a project which doesn't accomplish the reclamation. I don't think that's the way to go. I think you ought to dust off your files. If there is a reclamation plan which they have agreed to that they have not completed, <coughs> that's what Rick would need to take them back to court and say, you need to complete this. And I don't care if it costs 6000 or 60000 That's not the point. The, uh, we sealed the minutes, so I can't really tell you. <laughs> you know, what was discussed in there? And, and, and I, we and were advised whether it was because he was lazy or because he didn't want to do it or whatever that we go through you guys. That was my well, the, 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 understanding. All right, all right, but the going out to bid part, you have to. Yeah. I, I think that that right. was the appropriate right. course. Right. Right. What I'm saying to you is I think this is pre I don't think going out to bid <clears throat> When you know you don't have the money to cover what needs to be done down there, I don't think that's the avenue. I think you should dust off those files, find if there was a reclamation plan. If it was not completed, then that's what the attorney would need to go back to court to say to the Mosses, you need now, to complete this. And there's a, missing, there's a missing piece to that, and that is that somebody would have to take that reclamation plan and go to the site and determine what has been accomplished and what hasn't been accomplished so that the attorney now we has a basis. It's not a problem. Right. No, I'm just saying that that's kind of the missing piece of the discussion. Well, it's not going to be any different than Oak Shadow. I, I don't think anything's been that. done. Yeah. Um, do we direct the attorney if we find the reclamation? I'll give us luck. Do we tell Sager we want to bring him back to court or do you guys have to okay it? I, I don't well I don't I don't think we should have to okay it, but I don't have any problem I don't believe I don't believe the board would our board would have any problem approving that. My suggestion would be why do it separately, do it together. Right. Get those plans together. Um, oh, get a get a, get a get a note to us and say you know with some specifics that they have not and we'll we'll join you in Having the town attorney take care. I just, I just uh, want. I don't. I'm only one person, but I, I don't presume that the other two would have any opposition no, no, to pursuing no, it. It's got to be closed up at some point. Right. I, and I, why the fact that it's gone on 15 years is. Matt, well, that was my problem. Is that I kept saying it over the last six or seven years, and <clears throat> I came on after they approved that plan. No, and, and I'm not making excuses for anybody, but it's, it, listen, it's an old pit, it's a grown-up pit, nobody goes in there, you can't see it from the road, and it is an out of sight, out of mind type of thing, but I don't think the way to fix it is to go off half cocked and do it okay. with us. So, Timmy, you withdrew. I withdrew my second. Did. You both did, so that discussion is dead. So do we need to make a motion to contact the town attorney to no, have a review of the... No, he's got to find he, them. Okay. you got to find the stuff. When I find what I need, I, I will present it to the board. We'll do the recommendation. All right, man. Mr. McConnell. Yes, sir. <laughs> Are you awake? 4.9, 24.1.1. Not at this time, sir. <clears throat> you want to change? We've been playing around with it for three months, Steve. Not at this time, sir. <clears throat> I don't want to come in front of this board in December, because it's too late. So, please <coughs> make it up. All right. We have site plan regulations. 
There is a new copy in front oh, of you. Did I, did I have a question on the zoning ordinance revision? Uh, talking with Steve, we talked a few minutes ago. This town has literally uh, no ordinance on tents, on what you can do with a tent. No, nothing. So I think that we should come up with some kind of an ordinance that has some restriction on just what you can do with the tent. I don't have a problem with uh, tents being in the eyes to camping, recreation, but to live in a tent for three years with no water and no proper storage is a, is a problem. I'm not know. convinced we don't have anything. Yeah. We, were talk, we were talking about this the other day. Is there not a provision within our zoning ordinance that talks about a, a lot being used as a campsite for two weeks a year? Yeah. Yes. Can we discuss that? But a tent doesn't come under that. Why doesn't it? It doesn't. It's not listed. It has to so trailers. Trailers, uh, campers, all those things are there. No but doesn't, it doesn't define campsite? There's nothing in our ordinances anywhere to define a tent. Might I suggest that in, in Steve's review of 4.9, maybe he adds the language in that ordinance revision that he's proposing to identify the issue we're talking about, and that is that tents cannot be used in some fashion. Identify that tents cannot be used as a as a residence. Can't. Can't you simplify that though some without even going into the city? If, if yeah. the concern is that people shouldn't live in anything that does not have water in and septic mm -hmm. out, like in anything, you would think, but that's whether it's a tent or I mean even the even the provisions now, if if if, yeah. if you use a mobile home while you're rebuilding or a temporary mobile home while you're uh, building a house mm -hmm. there has to be water water going into the camper and there has to be a septic an approved septic for it to go into <coughs> well, we while they while they're building mm -hmm. if you simply make that a requirement to utilize any parcel of land for more than two weeks That, right, that, now he has, right now, the way it's written, you don't have any any authorities, right? I don't have any authority. He's got water bodies, he's got trash people, he's paying for it. It's all clean. <coughs> he carries in water. But where's the gray water going? Water bottle, they have no sink. They yeah, have but, 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 well, you're going to be doing dishes, they're going to be bathing. Well, well, well I don't have anybody who hopes they uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who's this one? The guy right. on uh, Doris Corner. Oh, the Doris Corner. I just think that we need is a town to address down. the situation because it's not going to get better. No, it's, it's not. only going to get worse. Right. I don't know. I, mean, I don't have a problem with it. If that's what the town wants, I have no problem with it. But I, I think it's just difficult for people living here that people talk and stopping all the time and asking me about things. Why can't I do something? You know, if you can get away with that, why couldn't I do this? If I can get away with that, why can't I? mean, I get that all day long. So, well, well, similar to the whole thing about the tent, maybe we change the language in this particular 4.9 section that identifies that there is a stipulation other than if you own it, you can use it for two weeks. The other stipulation is that, you know, if, if you're the owner of the property and you have your trailer hooked up legally to facilities, yeah. You can't hook to utility. What, what I'm saying is, if, if in fact we had that in the ordinance during, like, like Rick said, during a construction period, I mean, it's a very specific ordinance that addresses that. But there is, but there's two different things there, though. And that's why I brought up the issue of the campsite. Yeah. Because the idea was, too, and I don't think you want to stop. If you take, uh, take a piece of land up in the Austin Mountains, mm -hmm. somebody buys a, an acre of land. Yeah. And they put it in a little road, and they clear a little place, and they want to come up, you two know, once a year with a, for two weeks in the summer with a camper. Right. Nobody wants to prevent that. Nobody no, wants to exactly, stop that. Exactly. The, the the problem that I see, and, and this one across from you is a perfect example of it. You cannot define every single 
thing exactly. you can and can't not do on any piece of property. And unfortunately, even when you do divide it pretty closely, there'll be those that don't follow it. Right. I, I don't think that people ought to be able to camp out for months on a piece of property. I think you've got to think about the realistic issues that that brings up. It's, it is about water coming in. It's about where is the water going out. And it's not just septic, it's gray water. It's doing dishes, it's doing all of those things. I don't know that you want people being able to camp on a piece of property for months. In our, in our ordinances, we do have an ordinance for a camp, campground. The campground is two or more tents. Mm -hmm. But the only problem is, it's recreation and education, which this doesn't fall under. Mm -hmm. And all those rules right. that we're talking about, as far as toilet facilities, mm -hmm. showers, all this stuff, area, all those things that come in, don't apply here. And that's, that's the problem that you have mm -hmm. with it. It, it is no, I don't basically disagree. a campground, I... but it doesn't fall under a campground because it's not a recreation setup and it's not an education right. setup. Right, and, and what Steve was saying is if somebody's parked out there and they've got a tent, let's say, or, or even a camper that's just parked there for years, the biggest issue is that they don't satisfy the minimum required minimum housing standards, number one, and he needs the chief to enforce that. Is that is that kind of the gist of it, Steve? It is. Yeah. It is. yeah. And, and that's why I say perhaps, I mean, I'm reading, again, this whole thing of 4.9 about travel trailers and campers. I like the way it's it's worded because it does basically say that, you know, it allows for occasional use of recreational vehicles on parcels of land for not more than 14 days a year. And, and the reason being is, just like you said, Rick, somebody is allowed to come up and plop their camper on the lot for two weeks and enjoy their vacation. I got a okay. question for all of you. Have any ever been homeless and have any of you ever walked through Boston at midnight? Yes, I have. No, I'm I've the been first here. one, yes, I'm the second one. I, I've done both. Do you know what the word I've had a town try to throw me out years ago for my piece of property and I won. So I have a real problem with some of this discussion. All right. We will tell you what now. Application for merger lots. Well, I'm going back to the <clears throat> We have to approve the new application. The only change I would do would be to number four. They could submit a check for twelve forty nine out because hopefully we won't have to change this again, but um, We put the fees all on one page, mm -hmm. so we should put that fee on there too. So uh, submit a check per fee schedule for, because we can change the fee schedule anytime we need to. But there's no need of going through 15 different forms mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. so I make the motion that we approve it with that. Change. Second. Any discussion? We're going to try to squeeze this all on one page or we're going to have two pages like this? Well, we had to have two pages because of the, uh, the mortgage or mortgages. Okay. Can we just redo the logo a little bit and flag it on both sides with the, uh, with the wording and give us more space and move everything up on one page? This logo. Mm -hmm. You want to do that? Yeah. Okay. Now, instead of uh, the fee, we're going to use current rate like we did before, or what do you? What are your words? Okay. Uh, right. That way, we don't have an actual uh, number in there. See, submit a check per fee schedule. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. So we don't have to change it every time the right. fees get changed. That's, That's correct. correct. Yeah. All those in favor. Motion carries. <clears throat> Bylaws. 
Before we adjourn, I just have a quick question on something on this. Uh... We're not adjourning yet. Okay, I'm just, I'm just making sure. <laughs> We're making not sure adjourning guys. yet, sir. <laughs> Pretty soon, I hope my daughter needs a ride home. Uh, you gotta work. You guys have all read the bylaws. Were those mailed in that packet? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't see them. Well, they were online, Joe. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see that. Was that the one that said something about homework? Yes. Yeah. My dog ate. <laughs> Your dog ate it. Yeah, right. I'll be honest with you. I have not seen those. I have not looked at them yet. I've been out of town and then just got back. And oh, no, don't say that because you made a comment on one of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which, which one was that? Um, uh, I the have bylaws. <laughs> Three-minute comment, 11, will be Friday. I suggested that we could revise oh, the right. five minutes. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. You're absolutely oh, correct. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, we I got just, you I, now, Jim. <laughs> I was thinking this was something we were just sent uh, in the mail. Uh, no. This was what we had last meeting. No. I emailed you all the revised copies of these documents no. and oh, titled good. it Homework. Oh, right, right, right. And you came back and you emailed yes. requesting. That's correct. That's correct. Three minutes speaking time be changed to five minutes. Right. And I believe that Austin of Valley is oh, yeah, they uh, three, three minutes. minutes. That's okay. why, That's why we left today. Okay. All those, I make a motion that we approve the bylaws as written. Discussion's over. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. We'll be on three minutes. Okay, let's back up. <laughs> One minute here. Motion by you. Yeah. Okay. I second it. Well, I didn't hear the discussion part. I guess I missed it. Oh, oh, excuse me. All those in favor of discussion. Thank you. Any All discussion? Right. Yes, there is. What? Well, I voiced outside. I think the chairman. Well, you, you bring think, it up. I then. think the chairman got a little bit too much authority to throw out a member of the board. And I disagree with that. The board disputes time to time. I don't think the chairman had the right to have a board member that's elected throw it out. Period. I think a recess possibly, but not not to throw an elected member out. If a speaker has violated these rules. Refuses to step down the chairman or other, or the presiding officer may ask the individual to be removed from the meeting meeting room and charged with dishonorable conduct. First, under the penal law. Well, let's put it this way: so, those rules in place. I've been in jail about two dozen times the last nine years. I have a problem. Right? May. May <laughs> not shall. Yeah. yeah, but there are some chairmen that in the past would have done it, trust me. I would have done it. I, I have a big problem with it. <laughs> and I was a party to the discussion outside, and I obviously disagreed with him. Um, right. I told him, quite frankly, if on the Board of Select Men's side, I can tell you right now as chairman, I would have removed anybody that acted like some people have acted in these meetings at times. I think it's... You know, the whole title of decorum means something. Right. It's right. one thing to be passionate. It's a one thing to, when you say disagree, it's not about disagreeing. It's when the F-bombs start flying and the other stuff, which quite frankly I've seen on videotape, go on in this meeting. At that point, I think it is absolutely valid the chairman to play that person out of order. If they choose not to stop, that they be removed. And that would not... I. You know, you talk about being elected, I agree, but with that comes some responsibility to act like an adult. Well, I agree with that, too. Well, to yeah. act as a representative of the people that elected you. If I, if I can tell you right now, if I were running a meeting and people acted like I've seen acted, I, I wouldn't tolerate it. And I think if you don't give your chairman in very specific language um, right. some authority to do something about it, and again, this isn't going to get to that point if the person who is being obnoxious or swearing or otherwise simply stops. <laughs> and that's the whole reason for having rules. It's the reason for having rules to begin with. Yeah. But I personally think it's it's valid, and I understand your concern. But I think that people need to act like adults and conduct themselves accordingly. The only way I look at it is if uh, police department comes in 
and you're asked to leave, you refuse to leave, then you're in disorderly conduct. I would argue you have the, I don't, well, one, I don't think, I don't think necessarily that this board is going to end up dictating what happens in the criminal justice system. Oh. But I think, quite frankly, the chairman of the board probably already has that authority legally mm -hmm. to have somebody removed that is disrupting the meeting. That is correct. I think by statute you probably yeah, have that that's authority. That's what you're doing is you're simply you're you're putting it out in your in your bylaws that this is what we expect for conduct and if it gets out of hand, um, you need to leave or face the consequences. But I, I'm quite sure as chairman you already have it, it is the statutory answer. ability to run this meeting. You are correct. Almost everything that you've said is, is almost word for word. All right. So we have a motion made and seconded, and we have a discussion on the bylaws. All those in favor? I haven't read them all. I don't think it's proved for me to vote for it if I haven't read all the bylaw changes. I apologize. Two, three. Motion carries. All those opposed? Opposed. I'm abstaining. Two abstentions. <clears throat> Lucky we have four. What <laughs> of business. Is this the old one? Trust me. Yeah. Change. I don't know if you got the new ones or the old ones. Um, but the order of business, the call to order. Order of business. I'll look at it. Thank you. Under the call to order, uh, Dennis, you can use the old one. The meeting minutes. Yeah, that one. Do you, um, the call to order, chairman will call at 7 o'clock, then the pledge, then roll call. That's the only difference in the new ones. Mm -hmm. And under the type of hearing, number four would be amended plan. What are you referencing there, Connor? On the second page. Second page. Yep. It says the type of hearing is to be stupid. Stipulated before the hearing starts, you would add in number four. Are you on the order of business? Order of business. That, that's, okay, now we're at there. On the first page, you change. It would just be the chairman called for order, yep. and then the rest of it would be after the pledge. Correct. Like we do on our, on our uh, uh, agenda. Right. Yep. And then on the second page, it says to type the hearing to be stipulated before the hearing starts. You would add number four <coughs> as an amended plan. Because right now we have nothing. Yeah, right here. You can put in amended plan number four. Amended. Everybody got that part? Yes. That's the only two changes we made. Make a motion that we accept.
that the uh, order of business has modified, yeah, has Second. amended. Second. Need second to discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Okay. In our subdivision rules and in our site plan review rules, we have to add the FEMA. Site plan is 8.03.2 flood plain half. Flood hazard areas, which is this copy here. <coughs> okay. Got it. Eight oh three point two. Yeah. Mm. Point. Yeah, right. <coughs> Not eight oh three point three. It's two. I want to put that off until we get the site plan complete, which we have next meeting, right? <laughs> I'd like to put this one off because we are cha we have changed well, site, plan? site plan, which is 802 point, uh, 803.2. No, site plan is done. No, we did that. That was the one we... Yeah, 803. the 803.2 goes into the site plan. Yeah, so we changed a bunch of other stuff in the site plan, remember? Remember last week you and I sat down? Yeah, you just said to the site plan. So, the we have to have okay. I'd rather postpone that so that we take it as a whole. I also think that you ought to make sure that Steve is involved in this because some of what you've got in here, <clears throat> I think some of it is okay, but I don't know that it necessarily quotes all of it. For instance. No. You're talking about three. No, I'm talking about you adding the FEMA rules of the 803.3 and 10.04. No, 803.2. That's a, a typo on is that. Is required by FEMA per her instructions, and Steve can verify that. When? I don't know. What was that, May? We met him with her. June. June. We met with her in June, and she brought up a brought this up and brought uh, ten point one ten point oh four ten point oh four as being missing in our site plan and subdivision and FEMA required it. And I and I'm saying to you that's fine but it doesn't have everything in here that they are right now requiring us to certify on properties. For instance, it requires an elevation stamp on the plan as determined by a surveyor for any construction which goes on in that floodplain. Right. And what I'm saying is what I read here doesn't require that. Yet FEMA is requiring that of us and I'm simply suggesting to you that we might right. want to make sure, and there may be more than what you've got here that is being required. I and if we're going to, if they're going to require it of us after the fact, I think it makes an awful lot of sense for it to be in your plans up front. I will, I will get a hold of her and have her write us a letter that we need not put any more than these two in, or anything else that she needs us to put in. Well, it it guess, only took her five years to do this. Well, that may be, that may be, but I can tell you that what they're looking for us to provide for them is not covered in here, is it? No. So, if they want, if they want and need us to go back and prove that certain structures meet these elevations, then I think you need to make that requirement of people going forward. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. 
<coughs> I wasn't aware of that. So FEMA requires us to let them know if someone's constructing the floodplain and what their elevations are. Well, and they're even going backwards to when it was enacted back in 1991. One. One. If you are uh, rebuilding a house with over 50% of value, you can't bring it out of the floodplain. You can take the house out of it. Take it down. This is crazy. But there are a lot of rules that, that they have that they're expecting us to be enforcing. And what I'm saying is we don't more have than this. <laughs> So, well, I mean, I'm only in which case it hasn't been provided to us at right. this point. This is all she gave us at this point. Right. I get that. Okay. And I'm not saying that this isn't valid. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm thinking this more. Because they're making us provide, they're making us provide an elevation stamp as a, on an approved plan for every structure that was constructed in that floodplain after 1991. Have they provided you with? The list of all these regulations? They don't have to. No, uh, the right regulations I can we can get, but I don't know how many of them we're uh, you know we're obligated to follow. But I can tell you what they're asking for us to prove on lots currently in the town of Ossipee. And if we're going to be asked to prove that going back, then it seems that it damn well ought to be a requirement that they provide that information to you going forward. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah. Do we know how many homes are in the floodplain? No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but there's one hell of a lot of campsites. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got that. <laughs> and every one of them have to be certified as being in blind, in compliance back to 1991. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, well I will get a hold of her again. And get rid of her. What? I need a little clarification here from the whole board. Site plan amendment. Read the site plan. You're going to business. Put an addition on the business. Read the site plan regulation, Steve. I have. And I've come in here and I've seen two different things happen. Right after another. One person paid oh. the fees, and the next person, don't worry about it, you can walk. Just do what you want. Oh. These were two, these were two site plan amendments. Oh. One was the boathouse right up the street, Melvin You're talking Village. About Melvin Village. There's There's one, and the other one was on 28. They had a bigger building, and they wanted to bring it down, but don't worry about the site plan. You're all set. Oh. And they walked out. It was 28 and so the truck is placed yeah. down and that was wrong. He, he that made was it small on a thing footprint. Correct. It's still a site plan amendment. When I open up a file and you want to look at it, what's there? What, I think we were wrong on that. That's why we did two different things on the same thing. I asked the board, the board said it was fine. Well, well I no, understand I, that, but I, I got two more coming up. What do I say to these people? Come for a hearing? If you were expect, I look at it this way. If you're making a bigger footprint. Ah. No, Connie, you can't oh. say bigger footprint because you don't have that in writing. It doesn't say four or five hundred feet, Steve, make up your own choice or make up your own mind. You don't have that. It's black and white in the book when you read it. I understand that. So how do I tell these people which way to but go? Baldwin. Did not give dimensions, if I remember correctly, on the site plan. He did with a 60 by 80 or a... Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. We, 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 we Cut went smaller. Half. I made the motion and he went smaller the same foot. He went smaller. But he couldn't move the building. It had to be in the same footprint, but right. smaller. Which? And, what is the site plan Wards made the building bigger. You're, you're, you're increasing the oh, footprint. No. It's still the same. Whether you're increasing or decreasing, it's still a site plan amendment. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I got two more so, coming up businesses. What do I say to these people? I think you spoke with one of them already, the animal hospital. What do you, what do you say to them? Oh, well, I. Francis, Francis said something to me about it. And I said, Well, you can have to come in front of the board. And I thought he was coming tonight because he's got to have it by the 17th of September. But, and Steve, I, if, I, if I can help, it, well, if I'm hearing him correctly, there needs to be some consistency so that when exactly. a business comes to him, 
he can say you ha if you're going to if you're going to amend your site plan if you're going to do something different than what was already agreed upon right. then they need to come back that here is, that is correct. whether it's reducing footprint or enlarging footprint it doesn't make any difference no. they're altering their site plan right. review that exactly. was on file if they're going to do something different than what's on there then they have to come back here That's that cool. takes him off the hook and allows him to consistently say you need to go to the planning board and amend their site plan yeah, <laughs> it may well be it, it may well be that if you uh, reduce in the footprint it will go through here like a hot knife through butter and be approved but, but these at least he knows where to send it right. it's there, the, 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 I think the point we took at least I felt and I'll speak for myself that reducing the footprint did not alter the basic concept which they put forth in their <coughs> plans. If you increased, then you are changing the concept. Less is better, more is not. And if you are going to increase, You've got to notify all the abutters. And we went through this, and that's why I, I looked at Baldwin's. I didn't vote on it, but uh, I looked at Baldwin's, and I couldn't see anything that was. I don't right. disagree with that logic. Yeah. What I'm saying from Steve's oh, standpoint, out there, he needs to be able to consistently tell these folks where they need to go and what they need to do. And if you simply say to all of them, if you're going to do something different than, something different than what is on your site plan approval, come back here. Now again, when you look at that, if, when you look at that change, a reduction probably isn't gonna have a whole lot of opposition and it'll go through here pretty quickly. But, and the problem Steve has and the problem I have, we both have, is that we're putting the owner through six or seven hundred bucks worth of uh, expense to add ten feet. That's well, but if he's but if he's reducing, Connie, I, I know what Rick's saying. We we would we would want to have a document that shows the actual reality of what that site is currently after he's made that change if he reduces the size of the building. But I think you'll find too that on Baldwin's right. it said proposed building. Right. Did not say they were going to build it. It said proposed building. It was proposed. And it so, was proposed. So let me ask this. No, so, you're right. So a proposed building does not have to be that size. Whoa. whoa, whoa. No, no. No, he's he's correct. He's correct. But then how can in, but in fairness, no, 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 no. how can hold on? How can you possibly grant a site plan approval if you don't know the size of the building? Well, that doesn't make any sense. Because he yeah, had a another size. building that he was working on, him. and well, we're going to build this proposed building later on, which right. Which it's, is what? But it's the same as the marina. The marina came in and they said, we propose to add 16 foot to this building. Does that say they have to do it? No, but your site plan approval uh, so has to contain the size of the building. Well, it does as it a proposed. Does. But, but there's, there's a way of solving this problem, and that is, and I'm not sure, Steve, you can answer this, do we require them to provide as-built documents? In other words, no. if they build a building that's, they, the proposal is a 40 by 60 building and they end up building a 40 by 50, how do we know that he built a 40 by 50? We told uh, I think that's what Very quickly. Very quickly. Well, that's, well, well, that's, well, well, that's, well, that's, that's the amendment. That's, that's his problem. That's why you need it in a full exactly. one. Exactly. That's what it is. Exactly. No. Because you approve in a proposal, when you come to a board, with a project, and I, I know this because I've done it for 43 years, you have a proposed project, 
and this is what you propose to do. They approve the proposal. If you build something different than that, there has to be some level of documentation for the authority, whatever that is, township authority, to determine that they know exactly what's there for many reasons, not just for tax purposes, but for fire protection but and that, all of that. Well, well I know, was like, I, I've been hiding on my hand up here, and I, 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 I gotta do this real quick. Go ahead. Real quick, here. The minute the plan is approved, it is no longer a proposed structure. They're either gonna build what's on the plan or they're not gonna build it at all. No, that's not true. He, they have to go through the building permit process next. Yeah, correct, but he's not gonna issue a building permit for something larger than what was proposed on the plan. No. Or smaller. He has to send them back here. Exactly. I think he right. is exactly right. Right. That when you, once right. you approve a plan, it that is no longer him. a proposal. It is no. now what it is. But because otherwise, if, if you, you can't treat it as just a proposal in one direction but not in the other, that, what happens right. if you approve a 20 by 40 structure and they build correct. on this 60 by 90? Yeah. Today, I mean, the, the plan is the plan. Right. Yeah. Today, okay. The whole thing, okay. Again, <laughs> they had a whole structure they brought it small. He applied for the building permit and added it back on to make a whole structure again in the future. That's what he put on the building permit. I, I couldn't let it go because he didn't have a septic system. He never had a septic system. It was never installed. So right now everything's going to hold. <laughs> I had to go to the state to find all this out. Wait, well, who's this? Wait, hold on, what? You're saying that Baldwin, you would not issue a building permit because Baldwin said they didn't have a sewer system? No, I found out he had no sewer system. He has a design. But it what? What right? And I'm going to ask you point blank. What right do you have? to say to that man, you don't have a sewer system in that building. You got no water, you got no storage, you can't build it. You need a septic system approval number before you can get any building permit. Right. Any then building why permit. did you wish your building permit for the warehouse down to Route 16 B? What warehouse? Across from where he works on the golf course. There's nothing in the, there's no water coming in, there's no bathroom in the building. It's a warehouse. I just had to do that. And That's you all it said is. no. No, this building here that we're talking about has got a bathroom. It's, it's got everything in it. Well, that is what I asked you. I asked you if you would issue a building permit where it had no water and so on. And you said no, I can't, because it's gotta have no if there's a bathroom, if there's water coming in, you need a septic system. That was that's a structure. That was a warehouse. That's all it is. That's right. Nothing else. And there's no bathroom. Also, in the, there's nothing. It's just a warehouse. It's also a garage. It's a tour. His approval for that warehouse was no water or sewer. Hell, that's part of your approval. That was you did that with Dave. She said four or ten. She didn't Very call. See me telling me that. I think Baldwin I came in yeah, and applied for a permit, uh, I and well, they, they got the approval here, but when they come in to get the permit to build, all that, just be going long, couldn't do it. I'm sorry, I was under the impression there was no water, or, there was not going to be any facilities uh, in that, yeah, that yeah. warehouse. Yeah, there's a bathroom and shower. Bathroom shower. But What's in the building they're saying now? But to go back <laughs> to this proposed. Okay. I can show you an example in this town that this board, <coughs> and it's right over there on town property, Bridge Tree Lane and whatever that other lane is, every one of them, every lot had proposed driveway. Right, right. And you didn't, I didn't have to put the driveway in there. <coughs> and it said, how's here? It's also a way to install septics in the state. A proposed well. Is the well going to go in? It gets approved from the state. And what are they going to use? An old well that's 30 feet away from it? Yeah. That's how they get around it. I think if there's also one thing that I could say looking backwards, and it's not just this board, it's the boards of Selleck Bend, it's the zoning board. I mean, there are a lot of things we can all look back in our respective areas of things that weren't done correctly. Yeah signs that were allowed to go in that were clearly in violation of the ordinance being one of them. I mean, there's plenty of that. Oh, yeah. You can't spend all your time looking back. No. I think his, back to his original question, which was, 
if somebody is going to do something different than the site plan which was approved, mm -hmm. his simple answer is that they need to come back to the planning board no matter what. I, I, and I think that's my that understanding. Well, I thought that's the way it was, yeah, it was laid out, right? And, and there's, and I, think, I will take, I will take the blame. Well, well, nobody said nobody's, well, nobody's, nobody's, nobody's looking at the blame. Uh, you're saying no blame. It was some, we all felt the same way. Yeah, and, and, and here's, here's Steve a, was right. Here's a solution that I think this is this is something I've run into in my past, and maybe it's a solution that will solve the problem. Real simply, when we have a site plan review package submitted to us, perhaps we should require as well a building plan because that identifies what's going into the building. In other words. A site plan review says all of this, but we may not know whether it's got bathrooms or not bathrooms or whatever. It wouldn't be it would be bad for us to have that because it we helps can. Steve do his job. Why not? We can. Because we have not the authority to go inside the walls. McDonald's is a prime example. Well, I, know, I understand that part, Connie, but we what I'm saying is the outside. if somebody's proposing a building that has a bathroom in it, one of the things that we must review as part of our site plan review, if I'm not mistaken, is to understand that there's contingency in that application for a septic system. No. That comes into the building. No, I mean in plan, in plan. Square plan of building. And then I mean, you okay. verify okay. the size of foundations and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. I gotta go if she don't have a ride. Okay. Right. She be waiting since nine o'clock. Well, I see what you're saying. Everything with inside the walls. Everything yep. inside yep. that wall is Steve's. Everything outside that wall is us. So, but what Rick is saying is correct. That if, I, if somebody I, I is, understand that. Yeah, I think I think I, we we all followed that yeah. same path last time. God, believe me, we were all in that same boat. But I think Rick's correct that it gives us a firm document that says this is what happened. This is what's existing, this is what's built. Turn them over to us. <laughs> thank you. Is that answer you have to your problem? Hold on. Uh, thank you. Oh. I got two minute question. I see here we've got a uh, notice from the town of Wolfboro for a public hearing. They Which was at 7 o'clock tonight. Okay, doing a boundary line adjustment? Which is 7 o'clock tonight. Fantastic. Is this the property that holds those weddings that's located in Ospie over on the. Uh, no, it's. That, that they gave uh, all far of numbers, so we're a boundary, we're within 200 feet of that. Right. That's okay. why we were notified. Okay. Right. Okay. Fantastic. I just didn't know if it was that barn that's over there that does the weddings every well, weekend. Well, I'm, I'm glad I'm going to the budget committee when you planning board the hell alone, and I am so thankful that Sam gets settled with this. <laughs> She told, me you, on, you bye. she told me you were coming bye. back next month. What are you doing? Uh, no, no, no. Come on. No, 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 I'm, 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 I'm up to my, <laughs> neck some and, bars, I'll start. be up to my neck and alligators with the budget committee. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what that's 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 I'm done. Uh, I move for Jeremy. I'll second, I'll second. that. <laughs> All in favor. Bye. All right. Now. Let's see you about this board. That was unanimous. All right.